Hey, gang, welcome, everybody, to one of the live episode of the Outlaw Nation here uh, in the Outlaw Nation studios, the Outlaw Nation show, rather, here on the Outlaw Nation studios. It's a Tuesday night. I got to be honest with you guys. I am absolutely fucking exhausted and wrecked from a long weekend of being out of town, looking at some things, coming in back into town, immediately working on stuff all day Monday. Today, I had a hosting audition. I had to redo three separate times uh, in the middle, uh, in between doing Mornings with the Outlaw, S S E N live, then backstage. So it was I was taking off a suit with a tie, putting a suit back on again with a tie, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So by 3 30, 4 p.m., I was like, I was like, fuck it. I'm making some lunch at four o'clock in the afternoon from Trader Joe's for you know, you get it. You know what I'm talking about. And I put on the greatest showman. That's right. You kiss my ass. I watched the greatest showman and made myself feel better about my life and get myself ready to go for tonight. Had to kind of, you know, kind of wash out all the angst of the day and relax and get ready to talk to my brother, my friend. Now, he's my brother with an A. He's my brother with an A and my friend and my faction mate. And I can't wait to get into it with him tonight and talk about all the things that are going on in his world, all the things going on in our world and in the Schmodown and in life uh, and in love and in the pursuit of liberty. We're going to talk about all of that uh, tonight. As you can tell there, we got the Superman. We're going to have this little Superman action going on as well. Thank you to all of you for joining us tonight so far. We've got like 40, 80 y'all joining us live right now. Thank you so much. 50, yeah, already with 30 likes. Thank you. Uh, please remember the Streamlabs and the Super Chats are up. I already see a Super Chat already. We're definitely going to talk about Riley and what how he's been approaching the screenplay writing stuff and everything he's been doing with his patrons as well. So all of that granny goodness uh, is going to be part of tonight. Can you tell I'm off kilter tonight? Can you tell I'm crazy tonight? I am. I'm crazy tonight, and I couldn't think of a better guest to have uh, with me tonight as we get into things. So keep your Streamlabs, keep your Super Chats coming. If you donate over $20, I will imitate the Schmobot and do the outlaw bot uh, in a robot voice reading your stuff. And a little bit later on, I'm going to have my producer, Sean Barreto, the great Sean Barreto, come on in and tell you all how you can come in live in the second hour of this uh, of this show and ask your questions live of me and Mark Riley. We might try to limit them to only people who are donating at the $10 and above level for my patrons. They get first dibs, but everybody else, maybe if you can throw in a little $10 bucks in the stream labs, that'll get you on uh, uh, here to the show. And if you throw in 100 hell, Riley and I will come over and, uh, I don't know, hang out with you for a beer. I don't know. I'm just saying. All right. Anyway, let's get into some things tonight. And let's get into my guest. Well, not into my guest, but let's get let's introduce my guest. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome one of the greatest men I've ever had the pleasure to get to know uh, here in the world over the last few years. We were, uh, you know, collider teammates there over there at that old place. We were we've been faction mates for quite some time, always supportive of each other in the Schmodown, even during our rivalry days way back when. Can people blow dust off those memories? <sighs> Way back when we had uh, such a great rivalry and became great friends, and uh, there's nobody I cheer for more uh, in the game this side of Dan Merle than I cheer for my brother Mark Riley. He's a writer, he's a producer, uh, he's soon probably to be a director at some point down the road. He's got a beautiful girlfriend who is a uh, fiance rather who is lined up to marry very soon, uh, and he's got so much going on in this world. You guys know if you're patrons of Mark Riley, there's so much you're enjoying by being a part of his world and his uh, stuff he's got going on on his channel as well. And if you haven't subscribed to the Mark Riley YouTube channel, you should absolutely do that as well. And I bet I bet by this conversation, 30 minutes in, you'll be subscribed to his uh, programming over there. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Outlaw Nation show, Yodi himself, the king of Star Wars, the king of Superman, right over there, Mark Joseph David Riley. I don't know if that's his middle name. Mark Riley, how are you, brother man? How are things? <laughs> Jesus, I'm fine now. After that, I'm going to add all those names to my middle name because I need, I don't know, I need a new identity after the weekend I had. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. Woo. Already already talking about it. Here we go. How, how are things, man? How's, how's your week been starting out? How was your weekend recovering? I mean, we did hang out after both of our matches on, uh, on that, on that Blue did. Jeans feed uh, with other champions. 
uh, having a good time uh, shooting the shit over some uh, some wine. Right. How, how, how are you handling things? How are you feeling? My man? Yeah, I'm sure we'll get into it. I mean, let's uh, talk about today. You know, it's, it's, it's a good day. <laughs> I'm handling it well, as well as to be con- <laughs> expected. And um, well, I'm sure we'll go really, really deep into it. But sure. Uh, it, I f- it felt like um, I actually felt like I had a hangover. Oh, all weekend without drinking wow. heavily. Okay. It was like it really was a, a, a hard weekend, but um, managed yeah. to have really fun. And then a lot of fun hanging out by the pool, barbecuing some steaks, oh, uh, drink some really nice wine uh, that we opened and, um, you know, uh, that kind of thing. So and then back to work, man. You know what it's like. You're talking about the YouTube channel and the Patreon and all the things we got going. Monday oh, yeah. work today. I, I, w- I rolled in here coming in hot. I was I like, know you yeah. out with your patrons before you came in here. What, yeah, what, I was doing some happened? Patreon stuff over there. Uh, yeah, and uh, here we are, man. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like I said, I'm exhausted. I'm wrecked. I just slammed down about four dark chocolate-covered walnuts into my mouth and just nice. uh, kind of living my life as best I can. Um, I got told by my manager this morning, my new hosting agent slash manager, that I need to lose 10 pounds, that I don't carry the weight well enough for them to consider me a bookable talent. So until I lose the 10 pounds, I've got, I'm not going to be able to probably book some uh, big projects like they like they know I can't. So now yeah. I got to get on that treadmill, work my fat ass off. So hey, that's my hey, life. Man. That's that's fine, man. That's uh that's some hard uh, honest. I'm sure. Yeah, knowing you, real cat, that's that's just gonna you know one piss you off. Two, True. go you're gonna go do it. Yeah. Um, and three, yeah. I mean that that's that's business. Uh, yeah. But four, you know, can we? Are we cursing? Can we curse? Of course. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and four, like go fuck yourself. You know. Yeah. <laughs> It's like that kind of stuff. You know, it's like, you know, it reminds me of the guy. Go fuck yourself. It reminds me of that the fucking asshole who read my my screenplay a couple years ago that oh. won a damn contest. And they're like, you know, it's just not good, man. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's just not very good. And uh yeah, he said this to me and my writing partner. And he goes, you know, it's like maybe it could, you know, it'd benefit if you put some more Instagram in it. And I was like, Instagram. Instagram. So the other meeting I had was with a Netflix producer that really liked it, you know, oh, nice. and so that's the point in that story. They're right. all, they're a bunch of, everybody has an, they're, they're like assholes. Everybody has an opinion and an yeah. asshole. Yeah. They all have yeah. one. But boy, <laughs> I can't fair. even say that. Uh, Roxy said that to me. She's like, trust me. I, 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 every agent I've ever been, every manager I've ever been with has always said to me, you need to lose 10 pounds. I think it's there. I think it's there. She said, I think it's there. Write a passage for you as a client to see how dedicated you are to be a part of uh, a bookable <laughs> yeah, talent or whatever they want to call it. So yeah, they're but, like, are we going to make them cry today? Let's see. All right. <laughs> what are you come doing? on in. You're fat. <laughs> Just, uh, yeah. Hollywood. What's your can- dream? <laughs> what's your dream baby skyscrapers and everything can you get through the door can you get through the door i just want to know jesus <laughs> christ <laughs> oh beautiful man uh, i love it anyway um how, so what what has been your focus now over the last few weeks riles i know you moved into a new place your studio looks fantastic your Thanks, background man. looks perfect it's so yeah, professional like it. you know i yeah, love I got it the so. nerdiness going you do oh. it's really good but then you've got the indiana jones stuff you've got uh, uh yeah. was it rise of was it Last Jedi? There on Last the, Jedi, I got a yeah. little, got a little dual Luke Skywalker action going here. I got, nice. I got Luke at his lowest over there, hanging upside yeah. down, and Bespin wondering, uh, you know, Ben lied to him, all that stuff, and then right. uh, a rejuvenated Luke Skywalker at his hot, at his height, I would say, at the, awesome. the greatest he's ever been, and when we <laughs> needed him. Uh, exactly. So yeah, man, I love the new studio. I've been um, the move really reinvigorated me. Um, and, uh, so I love, I love, you know, the Patreon channel is going, or the Patreon page is going really well. I love Good. everything that we're doing there. Um, that's a big thing that I'm working on the YouTube channel. Yeah. I'm changing a bunch with it. Okay. And I am going to be, and it's not something I can really talk about yet, but I am going to announce something, um, oh. with it. Uh, I'm hoping in the next couple months, um, but there's nice. something I'm working on, but I'm continuing to do Riley's Cantina. Um, I have Jason Inman on uh, a bigger boat this week. Nice. Uh, we're going to do our thing where we're going to uh, the Patreon page gets to vote on the movies that we Jason and I like to get together and write and yeah. uh, not write, but we get to get we're writers Brainstorm. inherently and we yeah. we pitch our version of the movie in question. And so the vote came in and I'm going to announce it tomorrow, but it was between like Deadpool three and the MCU that we would just give our pitch um, Spider-Man three or Spider-Man four Raimi's Spider-Man four that never happened. 
Um, Universal's MonsterVerse was one of them. And then I, I can't remember the fourth, but it's all on there on my Patreon page. So I'm going to announce that tomorrow. So we're doing that this week. Yeah. And then, I, you know, I'm do are you doing Twitch yet, buddy? You got to yeah, get I'm on about, Twitch, man. I'm, about to I'm get on, on Twitch, Twitch all the time now, and it's really, really, really fun. And, okay. yeah, I did a big Twitch stream last night. We okay. shoot the shit. Julie joins me all the time. We have ourselves a, a, a fun time on Twitch. So okay. twitch.tv. Okay. Well, do you play Riley. games? What do you do on Twitch? Yeah, I play games. Yeah, I play a lot of yeah. games. I go back and forth. I bring Julie in. We shoot the shit. You guys shoot yeah. the shit with me. Uh, I switch it up. But I'm actually going to launch something very exciting on Twitch that oh, is wow. not really a video game. And I'm, But I'm working on that right now. Okay. Wow. You love tease, these. tease okay. the shit out of things, right? Yeah, clearly, clearly. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. Is it, it, can you give any kind of hint of what it might be or no? You well, can't it's going to, it. it's going to lean into what I do as a writer. Okay. So it's okay. really going to be writer themed. So, I you know, I, you know, it's, it's, it's something I, 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 I want to do because everything, my shows now are all kind of geared around writing yeah. and because I want to get into writing and I've been saying it a lot. And a lot of you guys in the chat here, I recognize you know, you guys are so awesome for hanging out yeah. with me and, and being so kind, but you know, I want to write, you know, I want to be talking about yeah. the movies I write. So I'm going to start bringing that shit into what wow. I do. Awesome. Um, and, and you all know bigger boat. I'm writing that, that jaws satire script. So, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to I'm doing a read through of that on, I'm, I'm going to do it on the YouTube channel. Wow. So okay. once it's done, we're going to okay. do a read through of that. That's the deal. Keep me, in mind. On. Keep me in mind if you think you got something for me. I oh, I, I, I have I have you for something. Mocha. Okay. Right. I'm sh oh, yeah. <laughs> that script. I freaking love it. So Since you went for eight hours last night. Is that true? Eight hours last night? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. It just kept going. Wow. Julie wasn't here. Yeah. So oh, perfect. it was kind of like, I'm going to go live at five. And then I blinked. And I was like, I would get up and just like, oh, what do you want to play next? Okay, what do you want to talk now? And then Julie called me she's like, i'm on my way home what are you doing i'm like i'm still on twitch i'll bet i'll get off she's like no stay on <laughs> i'm gonna join you i'm like all right awesome. so here we are that's great so she just goes on screen with you and you guys just shoot the shit and we'll play all right fine i'll jump and we on play there. and we Bye. play video games together and julie will sometimes uh, my favorite thing to do is play friday the 13th and 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 she'll oh, like yeah. narrate me you know getting killed by jason it's hysterical. <laughs> so I got to talk to uh, Goddard because Goddard is the one who's helping. Da he's helped Dan to kind of figure out Twitch. So I may need to jump. I know Ken yeah. helped you out. So I, I, I may jump. He on gave there me a little. Well. Uh, some of my Patreon members have helped me as well. They're, oh, they're, good. Uh, yeah. Ikaika and Bidur and a uh, number of good people out there that, uh, awesome. you know. Yeah. Kyle Cabrant, those guys. You guys. Phew, awesome. creeps. So I got no people who know how to do Twitch on my Patreon. I don't think I got yeah. only Sean. Sean just freaked out. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Always giving my people shit. Uh, let's uh, let's see. Mark the T's, Riley. I like that. Mark the T's. I know. Riley. I know. Right. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, it finally there's started being patrons. able to tease something because, and then fuck you, John. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's one of my yeah. patrons right there. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> it's a ball busting time over here on the Yellow Nation. You have um, to. We have to bust some balls right now to keep our head up and smiling and true. laughing. Right uh, there, you go, Riley. Uh, Zeno Hour just subscribed. Boom. Hi. Right over to your channel or, or your Twitch, I think. Um, uh, and so, so you've been working on that and putting all that together. Uh, what else? Uh, I'm like, how are things going uh, for you, marriage wise? fiance well, like, have you guys settled this thing yet or is it still waiting for it to kind of blow over what's yeah. the update did i tell you i, I don't I mean, think so. it, i, I, I you so. know i've been telling everybody kind of personally but we had to push our wedding yet again oh um october okay. was when we had to push yes. it from april yes, and uh, so we are indefinitely pushed right now unfortunately wow. there's no there's no reschedule just of yet okay so dude wait you know julie and i have kind of come to the decision that we have to probably really figure this out that we're either not going to yeah. be able to do it the way we envisioned and dreamed. Um, okay. and we have to make that call. We don't know what it looks like yet. It might right, be, a, right. uh, it, it might be a small wedding, just friends yeah. and family or immediate friends and family like my sister did, which was just like 20 people, Yeah, you know, and we might have to do that. We don't know yet. So we decided to just, you know, take a break. We're taking a step back. Yeah. And, and I mean this when I say it, 2020, can go fuck yourself. <laughs> uh, we're just going to take a step back and go, go fuck yourself. 2020. No one likes you. You know go what? Home. I told you, go fuck your mother. What are you still doing here? Bing, go, bing, boom. go fuck your mother. Go fuck your father. Go fuck your aunt. Go fuck your uncle. Okay. <laughs> go fuck your grandmother, your grandpa. Uh, you got a dog. You got a cat. Go fuck yeah, them. Go fuck them. 
and so, yeah, then we let had me to, see it if you could do 2021. To, we, we had to do it, we man. We had to we had to say it and just do it and know they yeah. and it really wasn't up to us. Our venue said, Yeah, guess what? 2020, they they canceled all wow. events at the venue. So here we are, man. I don't know um, how and that's why event life. people are surviving, dude. I don't know how event people, event places, I don't know it's, how they're surviving. Everything has changed because the 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 venue, there was a wonderful coordinator that we were working yeah. with that yeah, is yeah, yeah, no yeah. longer there, and it and it wow. and it really bummed us out. And because, it, you know, when you're when you're planning a wedding, especially you get, you know, I know it's like people might think it's Franck from, right. you know, Father of the Bride. But <laughs> we we had ourselves a wonderful woman named Lindsay who was like, you know, just like kind of on it. And then it was such a bummer. Be like, Lindsay no longer works here. And you're like, oh, of course. And you don't need to ask why. Yeah, of course. You of know course. why. And there's yeah. a lot of things happening. And we heard through the grapevine that it was. Yeah, they got rid of a lot of people. Wow. They had to scale down. They had to go you know, send people on furlough because of everything. So yeah. I like this idea. We do an SEN live from Riley's wedding. I would love that. I oh yeah. That. Julia would love that. <laughs> yeah. You just open up the Schmobot. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, the Schmobot during listen, a wedding. This is, uh, you want to see the SEN wedding? I got your SEN wedding. It's like, <laughs> Julie, I love you with all of my heart. These past six years, cock, cock, shit, fuck, fuck, and, and <laughs> ash, ass, ass, ass. <laughs> tongue, tongue punch, <laughs> fart box. <laughs> tongue, tongue, tongue punch, fart box, send in $20. Sorry, sorry about your wedding, Riley. We love you. We love you. Uh... <laughs> Anyway, is it is it oh. done? Anyways, Julie, I love you. And um, <laughs> this is the ring. And it's... <laughs> Wait, hold on. It'll be over. Well, we got twenty dollars though, so that's going in the uh, oh, the wedding that's the fund. Day, that's, that's the day Ellis gets up and just kills it. Just kills I it. love it. That'd be funny though. <laughs> yeah, we got to do something. Boxes. I mean, <laughs> I my favorite thing, dude, Roka though, is like the people that say, "Why not just do a Zoom wedding?" And you're like, "A, a Zoom wedding." <laughs> oh Jesus! Everybody, my mother especially, uh, everybody has a better, uh, you know, idea than 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 we do. So it's uh, like. My mother is like, why don't you get married on your sister's backyard? No, oh, no, no, I'm not going to no. get married in my sister's backyard. That's you got to get, you got to get it all. You do it on a boat like Smets did for the love of God. Just randomly yeah, out yeah. We got to get creative. I mean, I think what I like, I, and I mean it and I joke, you know, but yeah. we're, we're keeping our heads up. You know, you have to, you got to laugh. And, and it's just like, we just look, we have a, um, uh, it was going to be our guest book. We had this big wood centerpiece that you know, was going to oh, be wow. hanging and you're going to walk in and have the right, marker right. and write it. And it had our date. I mean, that's like the center of attention in our new place. It's like under on our dry bar, like with oh, lights cool. on it. And we keep looking at it going, man, can you, I mean, right now they're offering a date that's a year and a month after the fact. So wow. we're like, we wish. Wow. Yeah. Holy so shit. here we are. Year yeah. Month after the fact. Good God. It's crazy. Oh. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, Kristen yeah. Smith. It's your wedding. Don't let other push you, people push you to do something you don't want. Like right, the Kristen? Schmobot. Like the Schmobot. Yeah, like the Schmobot. Yeah. No, my mother <laughs> cracks me up. It's always something, you know. What about a Zoom wedding? A <laughs> Zoom <laughs> wedding is nuts. That's nuts. We can all stand in the yard and just, I don't know, pass around <laughs> a basket of cupcakes. <laughs> Safe distance. Everyone's <laughs> sitting, everyone's sitting in a yard with a computer in front of them watching your wedding. That would just be so fucking weird, man, on so many <laughs> levels. Uh, the link I for know. Streamlabs. Where is the link for Streamlabs? Should be in the description. If you guys haven't seen the it should be in the description. Sean, is it in the description? Check for me, will you? Give me a nod if it's in the description. If not, I'll put it in. If not, streamlabs.com slash uh John Roca says go up there and uh and deliver your streamlabs. It's in there, right, Sean? Yeah. Oh, it's not. Son of a bitch. All right, hold on. I'm going to uh, uh, hold on. Hold on. Give me two seconds. I'm going to get something up for people. Uh, but I know some people already sent in something, so uh, that's a good thing. Let's see. Fixed overlay. I'm going to put the new overlay up here in just a second, uh, and you guys will see the uh, address here, and we'll uh, we'll keep going with everything we got going on. Right, you working on the writing stuff. You were talking about it. What is yeah, um, what is what is um. How can I say this correctly? What is uh, inspiring you about working with your patrons? Like what is really kind of coming through for you as you work with them, as you do the writings? Do you find that you're getting as much back in terms of inspiration and knowledge and experience? Uh, and I don't mean that like, you know, but I don't know. Are you getting more back 
Uh, yeah, oh, then, I know what you're it. asking, dude. And yeah. it, it's like, I can stop you. I, it, it's, it's the most incredible. You're, you're referring to, I created a tier called the writer's room. It's $10 mm -hmm. a month. Um, it's basically like having a three hour writing workshop once a month yeah. because this Saturday we're doing our, our writer's room and it always goes three hours. Wow. And I always, it started with saying, we'll go an hour and, uh, you know, we'll have a couple people show up and that's, and then we would go a little bit longer and then we get, now it's like, all right, 15, 18, 20 of you in here. Yeah. We're doing an out. We're doing three hours and yeah. we're going to go into it. And so it is the most yeah. absolute. And not only this, and I, I thought about it today, a lot of things going on, you know, not just, I mean, the, the, the wedding stuff, the, the pandemic stuff, the move, the writing, yeah. the building new projects, all these things. And I was thinking to myself walking in today, I'm like, boy, I'm behind on my pages. I got to, I got, I got to get in there. And I thought of my, my, I almost said class, but I thought of all my writers and, and was like, you know, you keep us in check and all the writing that comes through yeah, uh, is, is incredible. And I see the leaps and bounds of people get like getting better and getting scripts done, like finishing wow. projects. Wow. I have novelists in there. I have, um, uh, one, one of my patrons came in and shared his stand up set, you know, wow. shared video of an open mic and we gave, yeah, yeah. you know, that was amazing. Um, you know, uh, some people write, you know, uh, you know, Star Wars. Uh, yeah. I had uh, Brennan wrote a uh, chapter like straight out of Dune, like like wow. the 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 chapter like right before Dune, and I was like, yeah. oh, so it is absolutely inspiring. I feel like I, it, it it really really keeps me creatively charged and keeps me creatively in check with my own stuff, yeah. and I love it too because I'm writing. I'm I'm working on this uh, Jaws script called The Bigger mm -hmm. Boat. I submit in writer's room. These guys are reading those pages and giving wow. me great feedback. That's and uh, and 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 keeping me motivated because you know if I say oh yeah like the other day on one of my Patreon hangs that we do yeah. we, that we do I said oh my god I haven't even written yet and somebody in my writer's room that was also on another tier was like listen yeah. if you don't finish that script I'm gonna be pissed you know because they're 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 enjoying it so you, yeah. you guys are really giving back in in ways that I I can't even imagine and then that's incredible um, and I'm able to one tier up at the twenty as a development exec so we get yeah. to talk about. Well, I'm also thinking about this idea. Now I'm thinking about creating this idea for this show. And then what yeah. do you think about this YouTube idea? Trying to run that room creatively with what are you working on? What are like, yeah. it's, it's a really, really fun time because it's like the more I want to do this and the more the stuff I'm teasing yeah. is like, no, I'm start. I'm going to start a production company. <laughs> like that's ah. what I want to do. That makes so sense. that's what I'm going to try to do. And uh, God, God love you, Rocco. What, what the hell else are we going to do right now? I know. I know, dude. I know. I right. Know. The I'm, pandemic I'm, and ugh. all I'm doing is creating shows. That's all. I, exactly. I apparently man. I can't have You're being creative. I can't, I can't, I'm, yeah, I'm trying. That's for goddamn sure. I'm trying. Hey, but you know, dude, Rocco, we make fun of you. Sure. But <laughs> <laughs> you are, you the, the, like respect the hustle, man. I freaking love what you're doing. And you <laughs> like, you, I'm like, we would do that at Collider. Yeah, we did that in the Schmodown, man. We keep our, yeah. ourselves in check. I see you going all crazy and, and yeah. doing all the things that you're doing. And I'm like, damn it. Oh, Roka's working hard. I remember getting uh, working here. Shit, well, that's the same I was the way I feel when I watch you or when I watch uh, Roxy or Dan. Like, I'm like, all right, these, these, they're doing their thing. I got to jump on. Like, I'm like, I'm mad that I haven't done enough reviews on this channel right. like Dan has. And I'm like, I got to, that's the next step. I got to kick my ass up. To just like start doing more reviews on here and do these videos, you know, because I'm still getting links to stuff. I'm still get, like I just got sent the entire season two of Boys and I'm, the Boys, and I'm like I got to sit down on a Saturday and watch this thing and review it. So I got to <laughs> jump out this. <laughs> 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 Kristen mm. Smith, uh, Roka shows will blot out the sun. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it's it. It's like when uh, Mr. Burns puts up the sun blocker. <laughs> somebody, somebody Photoshop Roka's face on Mr. Burns on that episode. <laughs> Perfect. Dude. Oh, Perfect. and I'm sure it's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm going to hit uh, two, of these, awesome. uh, two of these stream labs. Jay Scotty for real says, the evening fellas, given his talent for writing, let's hear Riley's elevator pitch for a quote, elevated horror Western starring John Roka as the outlaw. Personally, I'm imagining El Mariachi meets Evil Dead, complete with quotable one-liners. Yeah, what you got, boys. Ooh, I love cool. that. Elevated yeah. horror western, huh? Elevated horror western. My God. Let's wow. see here. Okay, with Roca. Mm. What do we do here? What do we do? Think How about are we going to bend it? 
Think about yeah, it for let's a second. Think about I, this. I just uh, interviewed Melora Walters. Uh, who, you know, people know her, Paul Thomas Anderson from Magnolia and from The Master and from Boogie Nights. Uh, she has a new horror western film out now called The Pale Door. Uh, okay. And what and what it is is it's a western around the James Gang or the Dalton Gang rather. And they okay. stumble onto a small town, and in this small town is a coven of witches, and they have to fight their Ooh. way out of this thing in order to survive. And uh, Melora Walters it. is the head of the coven, and you find out that she was one of these witches that was burned at the stake in Salem because she was pregnant with one of the priest's do uh, 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 sons. And so to hide his shame, he burnt her at the stake, uh, and these witches came and saved her. Uh, her spirit, and then so now they exist in this small town. So I, I love that. Like, Damn, that's a so, good one. Okay, yeah. well that's you see that's kind of where I'm going. Like let's yeah. if you elevate it a little bit, like the like we're, we're saying here, like yeah. we had aliens, uh, uh, aliens and cowboys, right? Or yes. cowboys and aliens, cowboys which and aliens. didn't really work. So we had that elevated with, with some aliens. We got witches over here with what you were saying. Yeah, you know, I'm sure there's been vampire. I mean, you know, Abraham Lincoln, vampire hunter. I know not Western, but it's you know, we right. got 1800. So close enough. Yeah. What is? Let me ask you this, Roca. If you're going to yeah. star on this thing, what what scares you the most when it comes to your horror movies? Gorillas. Uh, gorillas. gorillas? A AI and gorillas scare me the most. A simian uprising, I think, is very much in the offing in the future. AI can as we, well. Can we now, 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 do we want to maybe play around in other franchises? I, I'm down. I'm absolutely down. I'm sure Jay Scotty for real is totally cool with us playing around with other franchises. What do you want to do? Um, well, I'm wondering, I might need a Terminator movie to set this up. Okay. All right, because I'm wondering what a Terminator movie would look like if we got, if like a Terminator somehow was mistakenly sent back or something. Like I'm trying to play with the genre. Maybe Terminator's not the way to go. Yeah, maybe, I don't maybe know about that. As you think I don't about, know. Let, me, let me bring in Sean real quick, my producer here. Sean, okay. what's going down? You got something to say to people? What's going on? Hi, everybody. So, guys, just also just you know, make sure you guys hit that like button. Uh, and if you're watching this after the fact. Hi, and uh, make sure you leave a comment because that does help with the YouTube algorithm to get this show noticed by other people besides everybody here in the Outlaw Nation. So uh, if you're a patron of the Outlaw Nation, you're ready. The link for the to come in here live is in the Discord, so check that out. So, And if you're not a patron, why the hell not? Um, <laughs> I will be putting in the chat uh, the, the, to the link for Streamlabs to come in live at 8 o'clock at the top of the hour. Mm -hmm. So how it's going to work is when you click on the link, it'll bring you to Streamlabs, which John is using right now. It'll ask you to, to verify your microphone and your camera. So if you have a mic, please use it. If you have headphones, please use that. Otherwise, we're going to get a weird echo, and it's not going to be good for the conversation. Yeah. And then you'll be placed in backstage, and John will be able to see you. You will not be able to uh, – and then when he's ready – He'll bring you in live. So once you're in backstage, try to stay as close to your camera as possible because John can bring you in at any time. So just be ready. Yeah. Just be ready. That's basically – that's yeah. the motto in life. Just be ready for the love of God. Don't be sitting around. Thank you, Sean. That's right. I appreciate it. You're bro. welcome. Can I, ask, can I ask Riley a question? Oh, yeah, sure. Man. I'll ask him the same question I, I was going to ask you uh, backstage. Uh, in the sense, Riley, I know you're a big Superman fan. I don't know if anybody knows that. Just don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, Nobody I don't think anybody knows. knows. So uh, I have a question. What is your favorite song that has Superman in the title? Ooh. What is the favorite? My favorite song uh, with yeah. Superman in the title? Oh, yes. geez. What is that? Where is it? Where is there a good Superman? Uh, uh, how about main titles themes from Superman the movie? Oh, you copped out oh. to the theme? <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Superman. Uh, <laughs> Well, that's that's me also not songs. knowing what 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 the hell songs are out there with Superman Five for fighting. Oh, oh fighting, um, fighting, fighting, like the, the um, yeah, the that's the one. Stadium. I love that one. The, the, the flaming fight lips, one. flaming lips, waiting for a Superman crash mm -hmm. test dummies. Superman song. Ooh, uh, I love the crash test dummies one. Yeah, so that's a good people one. putting in Eminem. Eminem, oh, Eminem. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five for fighting Superman. It's not Brian McKnight superhero. Uh, yeah. three door, three doors down. Kryptonite, Kryptonite. Oh yeah, I love Kryptonite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Spin Doctors has Jimmy Kryptonite. Olsen's Blues. 
That's right, but um, you know we don't talk about the spin doctors in this house. So, oh, uh, fair, okay. Fair. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Riley took on spin doctors. That was weird. <laughs> uh, soldier boy, crank that soldier boy. All right. Oh, is yeah. That, is it, yeah. yeah. Oh no. Oh, I love it. Stereophonics, it. Superman, R E M. I am. I am Superman. R E M is probably. Ah, man, I grew up with R E M. I love right. some R E M. Yeah. Above the law, black Superman. Come on now. Why has it got to be black? Uh, Taylor Swift as Superman. <laughs> the game Superman. Uh, <laughs> T Pain as a Superman. Laszlo Bain as a Superman song. There's too many, man. There's too many. Oh I God. stand by my answer. I, I think I agree with your answer, man. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think Riley might be frozen, though. Is he? Am I frozen? I don't, maybe he's on my end, but he. Oh, know. yeah. Can you, uh, co can you come back out and go back in, Ralph? Sorry about that. Hmm. I'm frozen, huh? Yeah. Uh, all right, we'll get Riley back in bit. in just a second. A bit. You're talking. You're talking. To oh yeah, save me. Yeah, that's a good. Smack talk. Also, me too tired of, to think of anything funny to throw at him to start that smack talk. Yeah, bring it, bring it. All right, Sean, good to go. All right. Yeah, yeah, See yeah. You, brother. Thank you, my man. Have a good one. It's a good man, that Sean. It's a good man, that Sean. Good man, yeah. Sean. Thank you, dude. Like the question too. It did. It's a good question. He took the ball busting well. Yeah. Um, but but Let's I'm going see. back to the one with you in the movie, man. I want to get oh, yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I now, I now realize we got to do ourselves like a really fun elevated Western. Like what if there's a freaking yeah. creature that awakens after many years yeah. in the old West? Like a Bubba so hotel? it's like, like hotel? what are you talking about? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. That's I like cool. the idea of having a little tremors flavor. Oh um, yeah. I love you that. Know? Um, maybe it's like, uh, you know, add a little mythology, like, you know, Pennywise 27 years, it wakes up and feeds. So there's something about the idea of a, of a, of a, yeah, maybe a chupa, chupacabra. We had like, like you know, the legend like of that or something. It's like, you know, it starts with the cows being slaughtered. And then maybe the twist is that, uh, no, we've already done the, uh, cowboys and aliens, but I want another go with like aliens in the West or something. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. I, I think you, I think you can absolutely earn another go at that because that film was so universally reviled. Yeah, which I don't, I, I, it's not a bad movie. I don't know if people hate it so much. It's it's certainly a watchable film. Yeah, but like, uh, you, I think there's an opportunity to create to go, to explore that one more time. The Good idea. Yeah, the idea of it. That's I'm fun, down. but I, yeah, I like that. I like like a creature or something. Yeah, where like the, the you know, then it's like you have the. The old gunslinger that's like maybe retired, you know. Yeah, like, nah, I'm not in this anymore because maybe it starts like Unforgiven, right? Where they're like, "We need your help," you know. Something, something's killing our guy, and we think it's this gang over there, you know, doing whatever. Right. And it's like, nah, nah, it's a chupacabra. <laughs> it's, yeah, <laughs> they're all coming. They're all coming to kill everybody in the town. There's like you know mistaken things. It's like you know they go and that you know the like the you know the biff from uh back, back to the future three he's like i didn't do anything and there's a gun or whatever and then it's like somehow he's the first guy to go too he's the yeah. one where it's like revealed the big reveal will be like everybody's like no it's you and there's a gun and it's like the okay corral shoot out the okay corral and then all of a sudden this fucking thing just just grabs the guy and just wow. takes him and the whole town now that's act one climax knows that it's a creature and we wow. don't know what, you know, that's, I, I kind of love that. What was the one with yeah. Slither with the Slither, the one in the bar and everything like that, that kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Guns, uh, James Gunn Slither. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Gun there's Slither. that. I mean, like, I don't know what the creature is yet, but it, it could be fun. Could be oh fun. God, God yeah. damn it. I thought I killed them all. And maybe it's like, Shit. maybe it's like a wolf man or a wolf or I don't know. What wolf, it is. I, like I'm gonna, it. I would go into, I would go into some old school, not okay. old school, but like some myths, Chupacabra I brought up. Somebody said yeah. in the chat, like old gods, you know, like what are, what are like, what's some of the, the legends out there? Somebody said Cthulhu. Someone said Cthulhu out there. Cthulhu. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be fun. I like uh, the idea of some ancient creature coming back and maybe it's like, you know, my ancestors fought him. And so that, that uh, story has been passed on through the years. Oh, uh, there it is, man. I like that. Right? It's like right? your, your family might be tied to yeah. the legend of that. And it's like, yeah. So maybe your old gunslayer that's like, no, I don't want any part of this. Like, no, no dude, right. you, exactly. you, you, you have to, you are part of this. Yeah, they pull me off the, I can picture Clint Eastwood. Oh, can you picture it. Clint Eastwood? He's just like, they're like, yeah, actually you're a legendary warrior that has been tied to this chupacabra yeah. creature. And you are, it's like, you know, here's the book of all your ancestors fighting it. And just Clint Eastwood was like, huh? 
<laughs> well, ah, get out of here, you know. Get off of my past. And uh, <sighs> it, it might be a movie, but uh, Chris Taylor, you're right. It is my fever dream. I had it last uh, night. I like it. I like it. I'm down with it. Yeah. Hell uh, yeah. Let's get some Streamlabs and Super Chat. Circle back to that real quick. D-Train yeah. says, uh, Riley, you're still one of the best players of all time. Don't Thanks, let brother. anyone tell you otherwise. Much respect to the first ever Schmodown champion. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I don't like people putting disrespect on my boy Riley's name, man. It starts it's, to bother I me. I know. It bothers me, too. But it also, but you know also what it does makes you look stupid. Yeah. Look at this guy. One, yeah, game. first champion and first two time champion, and that's okay. That's the game, man. I'm not, yeah. you know, it's it's like I had a poor showing. I mean, we're gonna get into it, right? It happens, dude. It happens. What the? Oh fuck? man, this new. I mean, you know, yeah, this new thing. Oh, here we go. Here doing we go. it here, it's you know, it takes some getting used to. Yes, it does, doesn't it? And it's so good that it's uh, when you get to do it for a number one contender match and a title match. What possible pressure could you be under doing a virtual match when yeah. you're doing it for stakes that hot? So it's, oh yeah, yeah man. Totally no, that, that. there's no there's no question. And you know, you want to talk games? You want to talk big games? I didn't perform. Yeah. I was up here. It fucking happens. It happens, man. It it happens. it happens. And unfortunately, we couldn't get our feet under us because we we got opponents' choice. So yeah. then it was just like. I, I just don't even remember what happened. I remember looking down and going, did I answer any trivia questions? Because I don't think I did. I was studying with Craig for our match because uh, we were looking at the wheel and I was watching your match. Craig and I were both watching your match, y'all's match. And we we're like, what is happening? Like we're, while we're studying, we're like, what is the score correct? And Ugh. just at some point, you're just like, oh, God damn it. Jay. Oh, shit. So one of those for someone you like cheer for and you love and you like. Having them endure one of those matches when you yourself has gone through one of those matches, it is the toughest thing to experience. This, this is the this is that's my worst match in Schmodown history. Oh, I mean, yeah. let's put it in perspective here, okay. folks. You know, it's like go ahead, yell, scream, make fun. It's the worst match in Schmodown history for me, um, and that's fine. And you're gonna have them, and you have to you, you're gonna have to expect them. I mean, it's like I I can't speak for for Smets, but I know that Smets had a, a rough match. You uh -huh. know, and yeah. and, and uh, we've all had rough matches and you see it and you're like you don't want to be on that other end yeah um so the only thing you can do now is just friend like for me dude i know what my game is what yeah. it needs to be yeah. and usually my game is like i like to have fun yeah and that wasn't fun for right. me i was because i was too there was too much pressure for me yeah I, and and not to bring up old memories dude but uh when we went against each other when i went after you for the title to get oh, that, yeah. that belt back i went there's only one way i'm gonna beat john roca I'm, and I'm not shitting you, man. And I said, I got to go have fun. Yeah. Because if I take it too seriously and if I am up here and I'm listening to music, I'm doing this. I mean, and you see it. Some of those yeah. old matches when we were doing the behind the scenes stuff, I'm dancing around loose and going, fuck it. If I lose, I lose. <laughs> and the match going in on Friday, I went, no, I'm going to win. Yeah. You know, I didn't have that, that the, the Riley kind of looseness. So, um, yeah. you know, we're going to work on that. That's yeah. that's me. That's my game. You've got a tournament coming up, man. You've got a single tournament. <laughs> yeah. uh, right. And, yeah, you've got video Drew in your first uh, round match, the, and uh, you know, they're going to be showing that one. Who knew, who knows who? Yeah, if I can get through her, and then yeah, I don't even know how the tournament's uh, landing. And then we have yeah. uh, in in my bracket, I think um, I don't even know who I would play if I get by us <laughs> there because right, right now it's all video Drew, and I don't even know. What that means uh, yeah. when it comes to because video drew, uh, well, she's scary. You, you have she you seen is. her tweets? They're she's upside down. Yeah, they're, they're upside, upside down. down. They're in, they, she finds fonts that don't exist in the human realm and tweets out or puts them into her. Oh, it's great. Shows. I can't it's wait. Strange. She's so it, brilliant. It she she knows her trivia, man. So she does. Um, so she that does. is. We'll see. You know, we got to get back on the horse. But I'm going to spin it around on you now. I know it's your show, but how you feeling? Ooh. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, like, like you, um, I went into the match with Kalinowski and Chance, and I just wanted to relax and have fun, man. Because, like, to be honest with you, it's a virtual match. It could, and it could have gone either way. We were one Dude. or two questions away, either way. Look at it. So you guys crushed. If yeah. I had remotely a match near that, I would have felt much better about myself. Right. Exactly. Those are the matches you can actually like. They suck. But at least you played hard. And I think that's the weird thing for me right now because I played two really good matches. They, yeah. I just haven't come 
out on the winning end, you know, with the Ethan match going into the fourth round of sudden. Right, death. man. See, yeah. And you're, you're playing lights out, dude. I and I feel it's like I'm playing some of the best Shimona of my life, but I'm you not are. getting the W's. So it's a very strange place to be in. It's, uh, and as I go into this first round match, I don't know what to expect from Collins. And if I'm going to be able to step up or do I get upset by the kid here and, and the rookie coming in, it, it could be embarrassing with the run I've been on, you know, but I can't yeah. discount the fact that this guy knows a lot about IG. This goes not, this guy knows a lot about movies. We'll see how this all plays out when we play each other. But, you know, I'm excited, but I'm, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, nerves are, are part of the game. And I'm going to, yeah. you know, I was trying to, I guess, get rid of my nerves by not acknowledging my nerves right, at all. Right, you right, know, right. and we, we did the prep, man, though. I mean, yeah, there's nothing to say. Did. I know what you were doing. You know yep. what I was doing. Yep, we're a yep. faction. We stick together. Yep. We were in cahoots the entire way. <laughs> uh, we were. I mean, the faction was in a, in cahoots oh, yeah. the entire run. We played up each to other in multiple matches, singles multiple, matches, teams yeah. matches to get all of us all ready. And, and that, who, you know, it, you play in for the best players to ever play the game. We're we, either in yeah. a singles or a four way or a tag team match. So, what better way do you have to prepare? for uh any challenge you got in the schmodown than us playing each other it's just i think you guys just got a bad spin and it just kind of just like worked against you and i mean a couple of those questions were like way the fuck on deep in there with classics and i and i was surprised by that you know so yeah, yeah i you know thankfully i knew the ones i knew you know because yeah. i felt like i at least i was able to i felt like no, no, I felt like, yeah, it was like, like stop the bleeding. No, then it was like, you know, everywhere. <laughs> we were, we were oh, in God. the breakout room. And <laughs> so there's no worse feeling looking at your partner from across the ocean that is the internet and being like, <laughs> we're getting knocked out. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't oh. believe it. I was so hoping they would spin sp opponent's choice so you guys could get a little bit of revenge. Just a little something. Out, and then we'd go into a third round and then big spun comedy. I'm like, ah, oh, damn it. They're going to get yeah, this. I, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. 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 It, it yeah. hurts. What What can I yeah. say? It hurts. I, I like the game. It's fun. And, and uh, as well as well as I played uh, in that match with Dan, uh, I still roll. felt guilty Saturday or Sunday night uh, into or Saturday night into Sunday morning. Lindley will tell you, like I had four and a half hours of sleep. Uh, we were out of town and I couldn't sleep because I felt guilty about that speed round. And I was just kicking myself going, why didn't you say the thing? And why didn't you not answer incorrectly so that you wouldn't lose a point? And it's just like, it was kicking myself. And the, what? uh, the the yeah. the zombie land two one Matt uh, I mean uh, Mark I got to it just as he said time because I was like it's been ten years right but it's not two thousand twenty two thousand so two thousand nine and he goes time and I was like God damn it oh, I got man. to two thousand nine just as he said time so I could have got a couple of points back for us but those are the yeah. things you kick yourself about because they could swing a match uh, and you uh, do that but uh, but then again. I not I got that five pointer I ripped through that Angela Bassett category so you just kind of have to bounce it out when you're playing the game man. It, I mean, you forget how much of uh, uh, luck yeah, true. is so, so a true. huge part. And I call it the Schmodown God. Uh, the Schmodown gods are, are they're a big part of this game that, you know, yeah. Schmodown God was fucking absent in my match. <laughs> well, that asshole was like sitting on <laughs> Bib's shoulder. That one he was Bib's <laughs> and a kid. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Opponent's choice and yeah. comedy. There you go. <laughs> That's what it felt like. It just, it really did. It felt like it's like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, what are you going to uh, do? Yeah, exactly. What are you going to do? Let's keep moving on here. Ben Rayner says, the town recruits Roka and the horsemen to come save them from a mysterious creature. They come out and out comes a xenomorph and the horsemen versus aliens. Wow. I love this. I love this. Holy this shit. Creature. I was kind of wondering that the, 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 the creature reveal is very much stolen from Fincher's alien three oh, yeah, kind of right. thing, you know, yeah, where they're like in the cafeteria and, uh, you know, what if it was a xenomorph? I mean, and we connect the alien universe instead of Terminator It's been around for decades. I'm down with like that. It. If, I mean, if AVP was what back when the Incas, why wouldn't there be a possibility of <laughs> aliens during Western times? Uh, yeah, they've been nice. around. They've yeah. been around. Yeah. I yeah. like the idea. I like it, Ben Rainey. Cool, did a good job. Yeah, Muck Bang Reviews is another Mark fan. Missed your late night live shows. Epic. Muck Bang. Thank you, man. Late night, huh? Yeah, dude, we're, we're still going. Well, what time are you, Muck Bang? I can't remember. 
Yeah, um, but yeah, we're going. We're going what six o'clock on uh, or five o'clock on Thursday, I believe. Okay, so, uh-huh. there you go. Good to go. Is it uh, late? Maybe it's late for you. <laughs> One fifty six impulse says, "Hey guys, happy Tuesday." Mark, huge fan. Love your passion about Superman. I'm a Thanks, Superman man. fan myself. I want oh, a yeah. Man of Steel too. When don't when are we get Man of Steel too? I almost quit, and then I decided I might piss off the Batman fans. But I, I I quote tweeted the 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 great Batman trailer. I yeah. freaking love the Batman trailer. Woo! Matt reads this, and I quote tweeted the main Warner Brothers account that was sharing it, and I yeah, went, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now do Man of Steel too. <laughs> um, but then oh, I decided okay. against now it. Now do Man of Steel too. Yeah, oh, now okay. do Man of Steel too. Come on, okay, you can give us a good Superman movie. I know you, you can, can. You can put tape over that. Come on. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. I, uh, thanks, 156. A shout out to your mom, man. Hope everything is still going well with her and uh, she's recovering nicely. Uh, much love to you, man. Always love seeing you on SEN Live, too, as well. Um, let's see. All right. Let's jump into some Streamlabs here and get let's you do this, it, man. Get some here. Uh, Patrick Harden. Holy shit. Thank you so much, Patrick Harden. Wow. What an incredible donation. He said, Roca, you and Riley have had one hell of a time lately. Have a better night. I don't drink anymore, but keep the donation. How very kind of you, Patrick. Thank you. Uh, Tushka Productions says, uh, great to see you, Riley. I love you both, but also love to see you as a tag team. (laughs) What would you pick as your name? Suggestions, The Disciples, Steel Outlaws, Pioneers, Cold Steel, Trail Blazers, or Steel Stallions? (laughs) Dude, I love all of those, man. Right. Roko, yeah, we would, we would. I know, we, we, roll, we man. We talked about it before. We the, have before I paired I, up with Ben. Yeah, right, right. Before the unions were made, where you went with Ben and I went with Dan, there were certainly conversations we had had with Harloff that we wanted to team up and oh, see, yeah. and see what we could like team champs part two or team something. We were going to create something. Uh, right. We were going to come together, and in the end, it kind of played itself out the way it did with Anarchy. It, did. But, it just played itself out, but, yeah. you know. But you've had some we, legendary matches with Ben, dude. You guys have had some great matches. You know, it's a bummer that we, you know, that one was that the way it happened. We'll yeah. see. I mean, I don't know what the future holds right now because, right. We, there's right. you know, our manager's got a big decision coming up. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. we'll see. I mean, I know where I would go right. if right. if I were managing. So. Right. And you, you might not believe my answer, but I would, you know, uh, can I say it? Can I say yeah, what you, I would do as a manager? I put in, I put in you guys, I put really? in founding fathers. Are you kidding me? Okay. Are you see? do you see the way you guys are playing? <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean one bad match. Doesn't mean you and Ben can't recapture the match. The argument can be made that we are a tournament team that yeah. you can look at. You can look at our stats yes. and, um, and see. Absolutely. So, but you know, that's not my decision. And I, nothing says he has to put in the teams as they're currently constructed, right? Like he could true. put together. I don't know. He could put together me with you or Dan with you again, team champs or Dan. But with again, ben. I would call it again as the man. If I'm playing with monopoly money and a manager, yeah. you don't want to risk um, that blowing up in your face. You've never yeah. played that's before true. and you got to go through a tournament. Yeah. You that's know, a fair point. that's what everybody looked at. Who's the boss and went, <laughs> they're going to blow up. Because everybody, I was yelling at Ben, and Ben was yelling at me, and then yeah. Finstock was, you know, I don't know, stealing, you know, laundry hampers or something. I don't know what he was doing right. at that time. So uh, who knew we were going to work so well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair point. Fair point. Yeah. Uh, let's see. A uh, Chushka Productions. He already did that one. All right. So A thirty three fifty six says hi, John and Mark. Mark, if you had a choice, uh, if you had to choose out of Superman, Jaws, and Star Wars. Which oh. one would you keep with you forever? Uh, John, much respect to you. It's me, Adrian, from the UK. What's up, Adrian? And it is 3.30 a.m. in the morning here. Mark, I love a bigger boat. Thanks. All right, oh, go. thanks, man. I love it. Mark, oh, what man. would you choose? Superman, Jaws, or Star Wars? You only pick one to keep with you forever. Uh, it'd have to be Star Wars. Yeah? Because okay. there's so many good movies in the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So I would get the original trilogy. I would get the prequels, and I would get my last Jedi and force awakens and rogue one and rise of sky. Yeah. I, I, I'd have to do it. It I kills me. Fair. It kills me to do because you know, jaws, I was going to see Do I have a jaws poster around here somewhere? Somewhere. Anyways, <laughs> you know, and my dog stop yelling at the ball. Come here. Leia. My freaking Leia just losing her mind for her. I don't know what she's doing. 
I, I think I'd have to go Star Wars with Mark as well because there are yeah, just, man. there are better movie. There are more good movies in that uh, arena than there are in Jaws or or the Superman line, at least from the Christopher Reeve thing. So you've got, and then even in the bad films, there are good scenes that you can enjoy within the bad films. Correct. Uh, so that's that's something that you, you can say. I mean, think about it. You get Jaws. Yeah. You also get Jaws two through four. Yeah. The revenge. Oof. The revenge. You get Superman. Get Man of Steel. I guess you can add in um, Batman v Superman in there, which is good. I love Batman v Superman. But then you get Justice League. Right. Then you get Superman 3 and 4. You get Superman 2. You get maybe the Donner Cut. Yeah, there's an argument to be made for the Superman franchise. Superman no, Returns, about it. which I don't like, but you, I mean, you do get that. Superman Returns, you have the scene, you know, at least there's the plane scene. I there is the plane scene. scene. It's a great yeah. scene. Right. Yeah, yeah. But then he, then he starts stalking Lo- Lois, and it's weird. Super kid. It's a little strange. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joseph Curran says, uh, hey, guys, I hope you and your loved ones are well. Riley, is Star Wars the biggest reason for your love of film? And what are some of your favorite movies that aren't Star Wars or Spielberg directed okay all right oh, I, like I love that, that. i mean star wars is a huge reason i mean you know i was yeah like when i learned about writing and film and everything i mean i went right to star wars because i wanted to like why am i feeling the way i am with luke looking at the twin sons of tatooine yeah. oh the hero's journey oh this big you know epic good versus evil um you know the the heroes wear white the the villains wear black you know it's like it's yeah. it's classic myth and and that it spoke to me and then you have light, lightsabers so <laughs> I, it it really worked for me and, and as then, far as favorite yeah. yeah and lightsaber I mean it did it was just constantly something that I was always thinking of bigger stories and bigger yeah. like blockbuster movies most of them were set in a kind of a space kind of feel yeah um but yeah then favorite what was the other part favorite move uh, movies that aren't Spielberg or Star Wars yeah yeah. Oh God, you're gonna put me there. I mean, I go to the greats then. Uh Martin Scorsese. Um, you know, some of the movies. I mean, Sideways is a masterclass for me in writing and screenwriting and character work. I love Sideways, but when Harry Met Sally teaches you how to write a good uh uh romantic comedy and how like characters really are flawed but endearing. So like Rob Reiner doing yeah. when Harry Met Sally or um yeah, Rob Reiner. Yep. Um you know, then you get like some of the Martin Scorsese is go, good fellas is Ugh. in taxi driver is, is in, incredible. Um, I know. Do you see what the dog's doing? I have no idea what you, the dog <laughs> is sitting on my couch in the office trying to, I don't know what she wants on. She, apparently she wants to watch the Blu-ray of star Wars. Oh, wow. She's looking at it. I don't know why <laughs> there's, we don't know. Anyways, those are the, yeah, those are some, I mean, I grew up with the, I also grew up with, you know, Richard Donner's Goonies and, and, and oh, yeah. Superman. And so, you know, Joe Dante is gremlins, um, you know, batteries, not included adventures and babysitting, oh, yeah. um, nice. you know, some of these movies that define me as a kid, Reitman's ghostbusters and, mm-hmm. you know, Ron Howard's splash, yeah. was another movie, you know, even flash dance and footloose. I was over there watching those. Um, yeah. These are those all the movies great. I keep talking about that I grew up with that, you know, I, I'm the endlessly watched footloose at one point in my life. Oh yeah. Of you course. know, still one of the best just, soundtracks ever. Absolutely. So, you know, and speaking of Kenny Loggins, you know, top gun, top gun, top gun is another big one. Tony Scott, uh, Tony Scott, you know, then we go over to Beverly Hills cop and the, right. some of the great comedies. Um, yeah, I can go on and on. I love it. Uh, D train wants to know thoughts on DC fandom, man. And what you guys like the most for me, it was the new Batman trailer. Mark. Yeah. That, that Batman trailer is that that's one of my favorite trailers ever. Right. I don't know why it just really hits all the sweet spots for me. And I'm not, I, you know, I was like, Oh, we're doing another Batman movie. All right. You know, I'm, I'm excited for it. Everybody right. across the board. I want to see, but you know, to, to make it look like, wait a minute, we're getting like, and I know some people said seven, Sure, you get that feel to it, but it feels like a it feels like an old serial killer. Yes, like it feel it has some of the game from Fincher, you know, yeah. in it. It has some seven in it. It 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 has some just like I don't know old Scorsese. I don't know. There's like there's something different in there. I love it. Yeah, it's got a Zodiac vibe. It's got Zodiac. A whole, yeah, all of it is in there, and it's fun to watch. And uh, yeah. certainly in a way. 
uh, the way that trailer is constructed with the, just hearing the duct tape right at the beginning over the logos playing under the logos, the film, you're like, wow, they really were yeah. like, we're, we're going to like go full on into this. And then seeing the Batman walk amongst the cops and having that was that great. Fight. And knowing it's set two years in. Yeah. And so he is walking amongst the cops. Right. But this is what's interesting. The, the, ridiculousness of it really stood out for me of like a man dressed as a bat yeah walking into the middle of a horrific crime scene yeah right it's it, it, it struck me in a in the most perfect powerful way because then you're, you're about to introduce the freaks of gotham city right so we're then getting riddlers you know coming out and then we're seeing penguin and we're seeing catwoman there's something striking about that that really that got I got under my skin. I think is a perfect way to say it. You're yeah. like, this yeah. movie's like weird. It, like, it it made me smile so much. Yeah, because then it's making me smile because you're like, oh, because then you know him wrecking shit at the end there, just oh, like God. breaks the arm and just like <sighs> like all of a sudden Bruce Wayne is like you. He's so angry at you. Yeah. Oh, it just yeah. was so great. Yeah. I figuratively wanted to do that to corruption after we lost. So to me, so did I, man. that was cathartic. That was cathartic that moment because I was like, motherfucking, to the pit of God. you know, but like, oh, yeah, it was so brutal. You're just like, oh, this is great. But the, the thing that's so interesting, too, is it leaves you with a lot of questions like what is Penguin or what is the Riddler's point of all of this? A lot of people referencing the Telltale series of Batman, that it, that's the kind of serial killer Riddler that you get. He's uh, leaving clues like a serial killer would, yeah, yeah. for like, taunting like Zodiac uh, killer did, and yeah, uh, you know, taunting the police and Batman. That's uh, where it's and, great. We get the world's greatest detective finally, where it, exactly. it feels like it's like, and I know we've touched on it in all yeah. Batman movies in a certain way, yeah. But that's like the the way where it feels like directly out of the comics. Yes. You know, I think I think of year one Miller's yeah. year one, and and some of the like the grittiness and rawness of it. Well, it just got announced uh, what last night that uh, Barry Keegan is going to be joining uh, the cast. He's an Irish actor. He's going to be playing Merkel, and Merkel was, of course, uh, oh yeah, his first partner in Batman Year One. So, oh, there we go. Connections through this, and I think one of the things we were talking about at SCN Live, uh, Goddard initially said, well, he thought it was going to be set in the nineties, but then RB three was like, well, wait a minute, we have Nirvana. Everyone's dressed in goth. It's got a seven vibe. It might still very much be set in the 90s because the entire vibe around it is 90s. And I was just like, oh, man, I didn't even think about it like that. It, right. So, I didn't either. Yeah. Right now, it's just kind of looking a little bit 70s vibe-ish yeah. for yes. me as far as this film inspiration. But at the same point, timeless. I don't know what to, it looks like it could be now. It looks like it could be the 90s. It looks like I don't know. Uh, and here's that's the great though. And here's the deal too, uh, Mark. That struck me as I was watching it, and I don't know if I've heard anybody say anything, but Joaquin Phoenix could absolutely slide into this world with his version of Joker. I think more, so too. Right, more realistic, a grittier, grounded version of Joker could work with this Batman. They they look like they could exist in the same. Yeah. Now i i would I would go on a limb. Warner Brothers, you are absolutely talking to people right now. You are talking about Joaquin Phoenix meeting up with Robert Pattinson. I 100% oh, yeah. guarantee it. Um, I just think Joaquin Phoenix is probably like, you know, huh? You know, right. no, I, he might not want to do that. Right. So. I see people who are saying, oh, uh, the, there were cell phones in the trailer. So what? There were cell phones. There were cell phones. phones. Yeah, yeah. You know, there were cell phones in the 90s, boys. Uh, there were big phones in the 80s. There were car phones in the 80s. So there were cell phones. Not cell phones you see now, but there were cell phones in the 90s. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, it's like, I'm sure. Yeah, I missed the cell phone. Yeah. That's what's, that's really cool, though, though. I, I mean, right. I saw I watched that trailer probably three times. I yeah. don't remember cell phones yeah. in it. That's where it feels timeless to me. Um, I agree. which is good. I think you want a timelessness feel to some of these movies. So they stand out so that years later, you're not watching Batman forever going, Whoa, that's Oh God. God. That's I tried to watch. Yeah. It's it not hold yeah. on. Yeah. Uh -oh. Will you please get Leia, Leia. <laughs> that freaking dog. Apologies. That's all right. Eric, Eric and Castillo said, uh, been waiting for this duo in this quarantine. I made writing a hobby. Weirdly enough, just going for it and typing. It was the hardest part of the process yeah. as creatives. How do you get out of your heads and what do you do to stimulate your creativity? 
Gracias. All right, mm, Mark, you want to address that. that one? I mean, if you're writing, I mean, I always say if you can't, if you don't know what to, if you're having like writer's block or whatever, I, I pick up a book. Mm. Just pick up a book and, and start reading. Yep. Uh, I even do that for my Schmodown prep too. Just get your mind. It really stimulates your mind if you just let everything go and just start reading. Um, yep. I did some, I did a, 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 what was it? I went to Italy like years and years ago where I just was like, it was like one of those tours in a bus with a bunch oh, of yeah. students. It was during my college, all this kind of stuff, summer. And I was just, you, you have long stretches, you know, uh, traveling. So I would just read. I went through like 15 books. And I had like 18 journals of like writing that I just like scripts and, and ideas and everything. So right. it, I say, pick up a book. That's the best way to do it. I think that's a great point. There you go. Yeah. Um, and I, I always think meditation is fantastic too. From meditation is great. Yeah. But it isn't like, Oh, I tried it today for the first time. No, you have to kind of develop a practice and in developing a practice, then you'll understand what works for you, what doesn't when you're meditating and how to get out of your head and kind of calm your mind and open open your mind to receive uh, the creative impulses or the creative energy that you need to right. filter through your body to start writing or, or typing or whatever it is you want to do to create. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, let's see. Deflated Brady said, uh, how would you Deflated feel about Brady. it? Oh, man, how would you feel about a Man of Steel limited series on HBO Max if they aren't going to make an another movie? You know what? I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take a really great Superman series streaming yeah. where you can really work on character. And, you know, Mandalorian is, is shows us that we can really do some long form storytelling in star Wars. Why can't you do it with Superman? Absolutely. I think everybody just wants the man of steel though. I, I think it's a, you know, Superman and Batman and wonder woman. You think of those three in, in DC, at least you're like, give us a movie. I mean, we have wonder woman, Batman and like, Henry Cavill has been sitting in the corner yeah. where we yeah. get like, come on wait for some love, man. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree with some percent. Um, I, I would love, I, yeah, man, I've seen limited series would be nice, but I do. I agree with Riley. I think it's a little bit of a step down for a man for this. It, and I, yeah, I'd rather see the screen doing something, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it sounds fun, but my God, where's the movie? Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. Raven says, awesome. Some much needed R and R. Oh, thanks Raven. I appreciate that. It's very kind of you. Uh, let's go through a couple more stream, uh, stream, uh, super chats rather than we'll get people on here. Uh, D train says Batman V Superman was man of steel too. Yeah. Eh, you know, uh, really? eh, that's what they wanted you to think. It was like man of steel one and a half. Yeah. Cause like the, 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 the the cut, Story. the director's cut is a lot more, the ultimate edition is a lot yeah. more fleshed out for Superman where I could agree yeah. with you somewhat in that. But B Batman v Superman, it was more of a Batman movie, yes. in my opinion. It was. I mean, it, the whole so. thing begins with him being upset as, at Superman. Mm -hmm. So how is it not a Batman movie? Right. Uh, Jamie Gore says, what would y'all pick between Suspiria and Rosemary's Baby and why? All right, Jamie, I'm going to assume you mean Suspiria, the original yeah, that's right. where I'm if you're going. you comparing it to Rosemary's Baby? Yeah. Yeah. I would go Rosemary's Baby every time. Really? Okay. Yeah, I'm just, uh, as far as, I don't know, the remake Suspiria is freaking rad. I loved it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, Rosemary's Baby, it's a classic. I like it. It's a slow burn. You know, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's you know, it's. It's Polanski at his weirdest. I don't know what's going on with the, with most of that movie, but it is. It's a it's a rite of passage for a lot of horror. So is Suspiria, but oh, yeah. this is just personally for me. I just prefer Rosemary's Baby. I saw Rosemary's Baby for the first time two no three 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 four weeks ago for the first time. Did ever. you really? What'd you yeah, think? Yeah, it was one of those films that was barred in my house growing up because my parents can't were imagine so, why. Yeah, right. <laughs> my, my parents were Latino and uber religious, so for them, play, playing anything that has to do with a devil in the house was not allowed. So, uh, and eventually, I just was like, well, if it's that scary, I'm not going to watch this thing. But Drew uh, and uh, Alex asked me on Cinema Bias. Uh, onto the show, but they wanted to review Rosemary's Bay. And I'm like, all right, I'll watch it. It was on Amazon Prime. Yeah, I'm telling you, right? I was really surprised at how much that, how well that movie uh, holds up. I, I thought it was going to be dated and kind of boring, but I mean, there's so much to pick up throughout that movie about what's happening between him and her, and the price oh, yeah. of fame, and what people are willing to do to succeed, and then also what sometimes people are willing to um, adjust to. Uh, in order to survive. So it's just like crazy to watch it's, that film. 
yeah. it's a horror film in a very real way. It, it is. It is. And, and sure, you know, you'll see the date. The, it's dated in only it's like, yeah, it takes place in the 60s. Or, yeah. Right. It's, and so it's like, uh, no, but you, you're right. It's a, it's really fa it's a fascinating film, yeah. um, you know, in in that kind of genre. If you say horror, oof, it's, ah. yeah, it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. John uh, Lestrina says, just saying hey to a couple of cool dudes. Keep on trucking. Right Lestrina, on, yeah. my brother. Thanks, dude. Respect, respect. Uh, we got about how many people? Watch? We got 184 y'all watching us right now, nice. but only 117 likes. Please hit that thumbs up button. Hit that like button. Get us up to 150 likes, 200 likes if we can by the end of the show. I'd really appreciate it. Keep sending your stream labs and your super chats. And we're going to bring some people in to watch us or to ask us questions live now. Riley, right. you good with that? You good I'm with that? I'm good, of course. Let's do it. Let's bring them in here. First one, Brennan. What's up, Brennan? How are you, my man? Hello. Look who it is. What's hey, up, Brennan? Brennan? I just saw you earlier, my friend. How are you? Doing good. You will <laughs> good. see me on Saturday. You will. I know. I know. He's uh I, I was I was shouting you out the other just a little earlier. Yeah, he, I heard he you in the I'm Dune chapter. To share my, uh, yeah, my he wrote a great chapter, chapter of Dune. Oh, really? That's incredible. Yeah, but this week you get one. to read my novels. Right? I know. I'm very Just excited for it, least. man. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be Saturday. We're, we're, I can't mm -hmm. wait. Hell yeah. So my question is a little bit Star Wars related. Okay. Good. I think there are three, <laughs> three major elements to Star Wars. Mm -hmm. There is the war, the main conflict. Mm -hmm. There is the lore of the Sith and the Jedi. Mm -hmm. And then the third part is like the underworld. Mm -hmm. okay. Smugglers, bounty hunters. Mm -hmm. Which of those three do you find yourself most drawn to? Oh, God, it's a mythology all the time for me. Yeah, it's same Sith here. and Jedi. Absolutely. I think, and I, I, you know, there's a lot of people. I put Han Solo in the underworld category, the, the anti hero, the guy that's like going to, you know, shoot first and ask questions later. That feels more underworld, so I feel like a lot of Han Solo fans might go underworld, Boba Fett, that kind of thing. I'm Luke Skywalker every day, so it'll be Sith mm -hmm. Jedi. Um, but the war, I mean, the war aspect. Would you put the politics in there as well? The state yep, of the I galaxy. Be another one, yeah. It's fascinating to me. I, know I love that, that for, kind of stuff too. For me, it's definitely the lore because being very religious, I connect with that. Oh, okay, interesting. I love that. So anyhow, yeah. And that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. Um, I love that. Real quick, uh, uh, tomorrow we are shooting our next episode of The Jedi Way with Laura Kelly. And, oh, yeah. Uh, we are discussing um, having finding hope in a time of war in Star Wars oh, and how yeah. it connects to what's happening in our world now. So, oh, just yeah. kind of, so we're going to explore that a little bit throughout and also yeah. a little bit uh, weaving in some of the more topical stuff that's happening now and see yeah. how that relates to what you see in Star Wars. So, yeah, we just yeah. had this discussion. I am definitely like there. Oh, thanks, Brennan. I appreciate that, man. All right. uh, always good, good to, to see you, brother. Good to talk good to, to you. Good to see you, Brennan. Yeah. Thanks, we'll see you Saturday, dude. See ya. All right. All right. Let's bring in uh, Jay Scotty for real, straight from his attic. Uh, what's going on, Jay Scotty? How are you doing, brother? What's up, Jay Scotty? Hey, what's hey Mark. Hey, John. How are you? Yeah. Doing well, doing well. Coming at you live from the attic this evening. I love it. <laughs> Hell so, yeah! Uh, I want, I want my own attic. Right? Damn, hey, that's hey, awesome. It's not a bad setup. I mean, it's got yeah. a pretty cool vibe. It's uh, stays cool, pretty cool for the most part. I was telling uh, John last time I was on with the hot weather it was kind of an issue keeping it cool, but oh, it's been uh, a lot, a lot better here lately. Nice. That's good. That's good. Uh, so, uh, what's your question, brother? Yeah, first of all, I wanted to ask Riley, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Edge of Tomorrow finally getting a sequel? Is that a big deal or not? Yeah, it's a big fucking deal, I guess. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's a pretty good fucking deal. Uh <laughs> uh, appreciate you being a good sport there. <laughs> <laughs> Always, uh, dude, please. For sure, for sure. Uh, my actual question is, uh, it's kind of a, a two-pronged question. Okay. Uh, as a fan of the Schmodown and the uh, YouTube movie space in general, um, you know, with all the various personalities and competitors kind of doing their own thing now, um, in your guys' opinion, you know, what's the best approach a fan can take in terms of support? Should we narrow in on those personalities that we connect with the most and just kind of strike a chord there and support them as much as possible? 
or is it better to share the love, spread the love as much as possible? And then um, mm-hmm. with, without, you know, getting into too much drama or calling anyone out, I just kind of wanted to get you guys um, insights into maybe some of like the scheduling conflicts and stuff like that. I mean, you're all friends and uh, you're obviously networking mm-hmm. together and building something together. Uh, just maybe you could speak to some of the challenges as well as some of the successes you've encountered thus far. Yeah, man. Good questions, man. Where do you want to start, Roka? I love it. Give me the first part again. Yeah. Um, uh, so just Scott. like as, as fans, what do you, what do you think is the, is the better approach? Should we narrow in on those individual personalities that we kind of connect with the most and, and yeah. foster a relationship there, or is it better to try and spread the love and uh, support everyone as much as possible? I think, yeah, it all depends. I think it all depends individually on the amount of time you have uh, yeah. and the amount and the, um, the shows that a person or personality has on their channel. Do you find yourself drawn more to their shows, more to their stuff? And uh, do you have the time to really dive in deep in their stuff? And are you getting something out of it? I think it's, it's yeah. a, it's a subjective thing for each person. So I can't say objectively, yes, you must do this. I say only objectively, you must look at it yourself and see where you feel the most drawn to, what you're getting the most out of, and uh, what you feel most connected to, because uh, that will keep your attention longer and you'll get something more out of it from that. I think everybody appreciates the support across the board, but I think we also know that we're not going to have all have the same people who are going to be like showing yeah. up for us uh, in uh, every week for us. And then every week for another, or for me rather, and every week for another, like the people that he named his Patreon, I've never seen them on my stuff. So it's just like, it's a matter of who gravitates to what. So I always think it's a personal uh, uh, exploration for yourself, a personal journey. Yeah. For yourself. I for agree sure. with that. You're going to like what you're going to like, but I love, I love that there is that thought yeah. though, to support across the board yeah, because I absolutely. think it's, I think it's important. And I think, um, you know, there's different personalities in, in the Schmodown um, that are just starting out. There's, yeah. there's, there's people that have been doing this for a little bit and um, you know, that's up to you. That's up to like, you know, who you're going to connect with. And I, and I love that you're supporting the new, the new blood, you know, yeah. uh, as long as that right. Roka, we beat them in the ring. You can go support <laughs> them outside. That's fine. Absolutely. That Absolutely. sounds good. So, what was the second part of the question? Second, oh, yeah, yeah. The second part was more speaking to some of your experiences, you know, some of the challenges and successes you've encountered. Uh, you yeah. know, it's 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 kind of like you're working with and against your friends, for lack of well, a more tactful way of putting it. Yeah, sure. we've, we've all had conversations about shows that overlap. You know, and it's like, like Roxy moved. She was initially doing stuff around – four or five but she realized that you know riley's kind of doing good there so she moved to 1 p.m for her that works for her and now she's got world girls and the things she's doing i kind of tried to stake out some evenings and then the mornings with the outlaw no one was doing a morning show so i thought well screw it there's no movie talk in the morning let me try something that feels similar to what i'd done before uh and then the outlaw nation show but what I, I know, I've had this conversation. I, I don't want to uh, name names, but I had a conversation with somebody who's also doing stuff. And I said to them in a very blunt manner, but I tried not to be offensive is what I'm doing has nothing to do with you because I'm not doing the same stuff you're doing. I'm creating, I'm trying to create an outlet, the Outlaw mm-hmm. Nation outlet. I'm not trying to just create a channel. I'm trying to get an outlet. And so that's my ultimate goal with this channel is to create something that's diverse and something that covers multiple topics, has Mm -hmm. multiple diverse hosts, and then eventually get to that level where I've got a website, I've got writers, I've got a whole thing. We're covering movies, junkets, we're getting flown around the world. That's the goal. And I want to symbolize something. The reason I'm calling the Outlaw Nation, not just because I'm the outlaw, but also because I want it to be something different, something not in the norm that we've seen before. And so right. that's the that's my goal, which is why I don't see myself in competition with hardly anybody besides maybe Dan uh, for okay. what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I like that's, that perspective. That's, that's yeah. good. It's not me. I'm not trying to be mean or take anything away from me. It's just the way I look at it. Yeah. No, no totally. and, and Roka, there's something to be said about that. I know right now, I mean, this the, you used to we used to call it the wild, wild west of YouTube when some of the people yeah. were starting and some of the old school like Schmoes right. and right. Jeremy Johns. Now I would call it the Hunger Games. 
<laughs> it's you know yeah. the strong are going to survive and unfortunately you know we can't this is a business and i am very aware of people who are going to go and do their shows at what time yeah. and i'm going to move away as much as i can but then there are also there is also business and yeah. that if there if i'm doing something a stream or something at the same time it's not anything it's like my schedule is crazy and 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 you've seen it in I've realized what I need to do differently. I've realized throughout the building of my own YouTube channel that, that it really, that's not really what I wanted to yeah. do. Yeah. As much as I am going to continue doing my shows on YouTube, there is a definite sp specificity that I want to do and I'm yeah. learning. And so, um, you know, I'm going to change some things around and try some new things. And yeah. usually it already, st it's, it always starts on my Patreon page. It's like, I kind of reversed it. It's like now I'm doing Patreon and feeding into my channel. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, it's interesting. And we're, we're trying and we're moving things around and I Roka, you're moving things around. You're yeah. trying things. You bring, yeah. you mentioned Roxy. Roxy is doing thing. All of us are doing yeah. new things and, and trying new things. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, I'm aware my, of it. <laughs> my next step is like, listen, honestly, I do a lot of live shows and I I'm exhausted every day before I hit the, hit my bed uh, sure. because I'm just talking all the, like my I'm Vogel, one of my geek buddies texted tonight. He's like, what time are we doing geek buddies? Or no, uh, Shannon texted, what time are we doing geek buddies tomorrow? And Vogel's like, oh my God, we got to do another one. We just did one <laughs> for DC Fandom on Sunday night. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, Roka, I don't know how the hell you do this every goddamn day. And I'm like, yeah, this is my life because I, yeah, I enjoy I, it. But uh, yeah, I really but, don't either, man. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually I'm hitting that wall now where it's like, I'm going to have to start looking at how to make pre-produced videos like dan has those edited pre-produced videos talking about whatever and that may be some, and, and a couple of my live shows may have to go away so i can find time in my schedule to see if that's the next evolution of the outlaw nation so i can get right. more viewers more clicks more support more ad money more ad revenue all of that so it's constantly in motion constantly in flux constantly thinking yeah. about ways to make it better you know so right right absolutely so man Totally understandable, and I, I really appreciate those perspectives. And um, I'll, I'll hop off here because I know you have other people waiting. But if I, I'll just throw my two cents in regarding the evolution um, mm. of, of the Outlaw Channel. I, I'm a big fan of Mornings with the Outlaw. I know um, it's 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 a struggle to get that support for it, but yeah. uh, even if you have to go to a, a pre-recorded format or something like that, I, I would hope that you can still allow some audience participation. Maybe kind of yeah. like the way Mailbag used to be done, or, yeah. or something like that. I think that's what, you know, Ben asked me that when he interviewed me on Nerds and Suits. He's like, do you ever worry the fact that you do so many live shows, you're going to say the wrong thing? And I'm like, no, because the reason I do the live shows is because I like connecting with the with fans yeah. or the followers or the viewers. Like, yeah. there's nothing I enjoy more than having conversations because I'm a fan, too. That's Definitely. the genesis and foundation of who I am. I was a fan first before I became a host or any of this other yeah. stuff. I'm a fan first. So connecting with you all to talk about these things. And a lot of times you all are more knowledgeable about the minutia of these things than I am, but mm. I'm more about the philosophical approach or the larger picture about it. So it's a great conversation to have. And I'd hate to lose that, uh, Jay Scotty. So I, 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 I hear you. It's not something I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to walk away from for sure. So, yeah. Understood. Understood. Thanks, well, uh, thanks for your time, guys. Really nice to see you. Yeah, uh, man. Good to see you, dude. Thanks. Best, brother. Thank you. Look forward to interacting with you. Right Have on. Definitely, man. Right on. That's Jay Scotty there. All right. Uh, let's bring on Tushka. Uh, I hope he can be civil and respectful. No. Uh, bring on Tushka here. Oh, there he is. There Look he is. Look at this guy. Yeah. Straight from get Oklahoma. To, guys. Get to uh, meet him face to face finally. What's up, dude? Riley, good to see you, brother. Good, good to, to see, see you. Man. Uh, yeah. You gotta stop bringing me after Jay Scott because I have sweet. questions, oh. and then I just gotta oh. rip them up. Wow! Because they just it pales in comparison, man. Tushka, oh you can't, wow! You can't nice. incredible white man, Tushka. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, no. Actually, I mean, and to kind of piggyback a little bit, uh, I mean, I actually there was five shows going on: two on Twitch, I think three on YouTube. I just jumped through them all, dropped some love, hit a like, yeah. and then just hopped out. And I, I love it, that, man. It's yeah, and, and it's just, I mean, the, the whole community is growing, um, maybe to a point to where it's a little bit oversaturation. But like yeah. you said, you know, everybody's doing their own thing. It's just like TV, you know? Um, it, right. Yeah. It, it, it is. And it's and the audience will let us know how we're doing. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just like TV. And, you know, I've moved, I've had to move some things around because things aren't working. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to have to, you know, do some time. 
to, to, you know, there are things you got to grow and move and shift. And, yeah. you know, if, if they're putting a lot of money on Hulu on a series and nobody watches it, you know, and it's like, wow, maybe mm -hmm. if we just move it another time, though, no, it, it's like, there's, we got to figure that out. It's business at the end of the day, I think. Yeah, I mean the only the only show I allow myself um, a guilty pleasure on is the wrestling show on Fridays. Look, that does, that that rarely cracks a thousand views, but mm. I just love talking pro wrestling with Aaron Turner. And for the fans who do watch us religiously every week, we only get like twenty five to fifty fans watching us live. It's way less than what I get for normally for any of my other shows, but it's so much fun to talk about it with these hardcore wrestling fans. And if one hits over a thousand, I'm always happy. But to me, that's my reward for a week's worth of work on other shows uh, and the uh, amount of time I put in on those other shows, because that's a show that I don't have to care about how many views it gets. I don't have to care mm -hmm. about, you know, and, and Aaron does such a great job co-hosting it with me. And we have such a great time just hanging out and talking wrestling. So it's that one thing I love, but everything else I work hard to make it interesting to you know i work on the like what what i what the um, keywords i have to put what the tags are title like i'm just constantly thinking how to make this thing more interesting more attractive and get people to watch more things so that's uh but that show is the one i allow myself to not care to not worry about you know yeah and, and if you love it then you're not working i mean that's exactly. right, yeah, right that's your outlet and right. uh hey I, I, my best friend up in kansas city uh yeah. him and his buddy own a wrestling training center Nice well, wrestling organization, nice. and uh, but they we had a wedding in March that kept getting pushed back. Yeah, but they ended up continuing it. Oh, uh, and got married in the ring <laughs> with with masks <laughs> and everything. So I wasn't I mean, able see, to. See, I'd there. do that. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> right. You'd get yeah, I wasn't able to be there in person, but uh, yeah. definitely I'm looking forward to the celebration next year. You know, yeah, we can actually have that. But uh, but I do have a question. So okay. we're talking yeah. about the Batman trailer. Yes, amazing trailer. But as soon as you guys mentioned it, you know the, what pops in my head is that bah, bah, the music, you know, oh, yeah. it, it's with Nirvana, you know, under the bridge, yeah. you know, the first line kind of thing. But for me, I'm like as, as we were talking about that, I'm trying to remove the music. Yeah. And do I still enjoy the trailer as much? And ah, as a drummer and a musician, I don't. Like, I I still love the trailer. But it's not as much. Because, but why would you do that? The movie's the the movie's gonna have the score. So why would you yeah. remove the score from the trailer? No, I, I'm just in, in my mind. I'm kind of dissecting it. Yeah. You know, like what really makes me like just latch onto this. Gotcha. And it's that it's the that's the driving force in it. I mean, the you music, the visual motifs. Yeah, and it's the music. Right. Yeah. So really, with you as a writer mm. and, and Roca, you know, and you doing everything else you do. Um, <laughs> With <laughs> with music, you know, like I mean, is there something that get like, what are you listening to that's getting you in that groove? Whether it's training, whether it's just decompressing, or for Riley, you know, for writing, you know, what's something? You know, do you kind of almost have a playlist that helps you with a certain um, mm. style or kind of genre yeah. that you're writing for? Yeah, it's it, man, great question. I I will go always to movie music and what genre I'm writing. I'm kind of it's kind of a boring answer, but it's like if I'm writing a um, a horror movie. I've got a horror movie playlist. Yeah. Um, but I, but you can't just put on Halloween theme because you're like, maybe you're writing, maybe you're away from the horror of it and you're working on character and all of a sudden it's and you're like, Jesus Christ. No, I can't do that yet. <laughs> They're not running away from the killer yet. So you got to pick and choose what it is. So I'll do like slow burn music. Yep. Um, d depending on who it is, John Carpenter is obviously a great composer as well. I'll, I'll play some of his stuff, but really, truly, I'm a jazz guy. I'll play jazz. There you go. And that really gets me going. You'll hear me a lot saying, you know, I, I don't want to say it because my, you know, yeah. don't say it, Alexa, is right there. And I'll say jazz. Play some jazz right now. Yeah. Play Miles Davis. Um, Dave Brubeck Van. Give me, give me some of that stuff that just kind of like, then you're like, I hear this stuff in the background. Like, I won't even know it. I'm writing. And it's like, all of a sudden I'm like, bum, bum. Then you're like, whoa. <laughs> bum, bum, -da 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 -da. And I'm just writing. And you're kind of you just it's the easiest thing for me. It's just get in the my headspace is jazz. Classical music is also there. I'll just play classical. And uh that just really if I'm reading and studying and doing all these things, it just really promotes yeah, you know. I, I found a, a nine hour uh, uh, music track of Blade Runner, uh, and it's oh, God, yes. 
it's it's on YouTube. Angelus. It's yeah, and it's but it's like um it's with the rain and the synthesizers and everything. It rolls through for nine hours. And so wow. Um, but before I left Collider or was let or was let go from Collider, I whenever I would write anything, scripts or or, or build shows and rundowns or the occasional times they let me write for the website, uh, mm -hmm. it would be that that I would have on my headphones while I was writing because it just that score just does something for me that really just puts me at ease and peace. And so it allows me. So now throughout the house, whenever I'm walking around with my other uh, noise canceling earphones, if no one else is here and I've got really nothing to do and I'm just looking to be like kind of chill and think about what I've got to be going on or what I have going on, I will put that on. It'll run through me. Yeah, man. Uh, and the other one is this. Uh, I've been discovering some Native American stuff to listen to that kind of really puts me at ease as well. Yeah, uh, I've been using that That's actually. Nice. You know, I mean, my girlfriend's uh, half Native American, so like I've been exploring more of that music, and so it's like, okay, what does that do for me? So when I'm preparing for the showdown, because I, I can't prepare like normal, where I go sit in the back and listen and meditate, I have to do it in the office. So it's weird, but I'm trying to figure out how to do that to meditate with the with the music there, because I feel there's a I don't know. There, there feels like something from the past there that yeah. feels mm -hmm. it, like just connects to me and, and grounds me. So I like to listen to that. So yeah, it, nice. it's the it's the rhythm of the continent. Yeah, that's fair. It's the rhythm that was here, you know, long before. Yes, um, I love that. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, are, are you listening to like Northern Cree or a Tribe Called Red or? No, no, it's just like I don't know. I just go yeah. on YouTube and oh, I just man, yeah, I, yeah, check know, out Native American uh, meditation music, and it's just incredible. Yeah. Dude, check I gotta out. check that out. That yeah. sounds good, like right up my alley too. Yeah, Actually. Tribe Called Red is like a uh, kind of like oh. a hip hop kind of electronic. But oh, they're really? using a lot of like the the, the powwow kind of the native yeah. kind of yeah. rhythm with it and such. It's good, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah that. That, synth, that synth wave. That's when when I kind of latch on to, and then uh, as a drummer, yeah, jazz. I mean, it's just, it's just yeah. that expression, and it, it, it's, 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 it's yeah, a wave. Man. It takes you to places. Oh yeah, that, that you never thought you would, but jazz. Right? Yeah. Appreciate y'all though. Lord. Thank we'll you, you, dude. Good to Thank see you, you, man. All right, we got a few more people waiting live, but let's hit some stream lives and super chats because uh, I know we got like thirty minutes left here. All right. Ferris Bethuna, what's up, Ferris? He says what's we love Ferris? you, Cody. Love you, brother. Good awesome. to see you again later. Uh, earlier today, Ferris, my friend. I guess he only loves you. Thanks, Ferris. Thanks for coming to my stream. Tell me you only love what Riley. Thanks, that. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and ham stract says screenwriting question can you give an example of what rewriting is it can't be page one every time though that's what i envision when i hear rewrite all right riley great question um there's a lot of different examples i would say page one you're referring to is a complete it's it's what's known in the business as page one rewrite yeah. that means they threw away the script and they're starting over yeah. so a page one rewrite if you if you hear that as a screenwriter that, hey, they're going to be doing a page one rewrite on your script. You're fucked. You're out. <laughs> out the door, you're out. They've, fired so they've hired somebody to rewrite the entire script. Yeah. There's polishes that are like, hey, it's good. We're just going to go in and uh, we're going to just kind of polish it, punch up some things. Um, there's ghost writing rewrites where Carrie Fisher's very famously did this many years. She'd come in and she'd punch up some of the jokes. She'd add a little. She'd probably focus on a little bit of the, the female voice. Zero credit though. She gets yeah. she gets paid. Ghostwriting. There's so there's no name to it. Um, if you look at movies where you see a number of writers on it, if there's a lot of like this writer and and this writer and this writer and then this writer and then these writers and then these writers over here, good lord, watch out for that movie. Um, <laughs> that means there's a lot of rewrites happening. There's a lot of different voices coming in. It means they yeah. might probably rewrote the opening and then another writer rewrote something in here and uh, oh, I got that joke in there. And then they're going in there, going into arbitration and the, uh, the WGA Oof. trying Oof. to say who wrote what. And so right. there's many, many rewrites for me. Simply when I finish a first draft, I'm going to probably never page one rewrite this thing unless I really effed up. Um, I would just go in and go, you know what? I'll do a read through. I will get it to some friends that I really trust. Patrick T. Gorman is one of my my all oh, yeah. times my all timers. Great. You know Patrick Roca. Yeah. Love Patrick. He's my guy. I have read. He, he vice versa. We like to read our stuff. And yeah. if he gives me, he gives me great notes. That's when I go and I rewrite with that in mind. If I need to rewrite this character, you know, it depends. Yeah. I could get rid of whole scenes and rewrite and add in there, but kept the opening. And yeah. I love this line, you know. So it it really depends on it, you know. And and I would. 
I would I would argue that if anybody said first draft done, there's no rewrites. That person is a liar. They are <laughs> lying. There's always rewrites. It just depends on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, Wendy stopped in. Wendy and Wendy, uh, 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 the movie oh, couple. Hi, friends. hi friend. Kind. Want to give her some love? Not sure no. if she's still watching, but she stopped in a few minutes ago. Thank you, Wendy. Very oh, kind Wendy. of you. Always good to see her. Let's see. Yeah. All right, so that's that's it with the super chats right now. Let me jump into stream real quick, and then we'll get to some live questions. Joseph sure. Curran says, "I just want to thank the both of you, Roca. Your works first introduced me to your world of pundits. Riley, you were always my favorite because you were always respectful to people when engaging with them." I'm Thanks. eternally grateful to the both of you. Oh, oh, well, I appreciate that. That's awesome. Thank you, Joseph. That. Yeah. I, I give back what I get. If you come at me with bullshit, you're going to get bullshit. If you come at me yeah. nice, you to be respectful, we can have a great conversation. It's always, F yeah, man. however you come at me is how I, how I, how we address each other. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Thank you, Joseph. Um, Wayne Edwards says, it is always a pleasure seeing Roka and Riley together. Huh? For us too. Yeah, man. Um, Hell yeah. All right, all right, yeah. I am a Superman fan. When Man of Steel eventually happens, what DC villain would you like to see Superman go up against? Besides B Bizarro, I think he is a bit too silly. LOL. Take care and God bless. All right, what do you think about that, Riley? If, if well, you I I want Bizarro. Okay, I do. Well, here you know, Jason Inman and I put together our Man of Steel two pitch. Okay, and it was. In because we know the events of Man of Steel and we know the events of Justice League. Well, well, well I'm Zack Snyder. That's the version I want. Yeah. You know, this other whatever that was. Um, so we yeah. know that Superman went through this thing where Man of Steel at the end of it, you know, he 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 knocks some buildings down. There was this question on whether or not he's so Superman now he had to work really hard to get back in favor, right? Yeah. So what happens if you see Superman blowing shit up again? Yeah. What does that do to Superman? And what if it's not the bizarro that you think it is where it's like Superman enemy, you know, and you're like, well, that's <laughs> not Superman. But what if bizarro is a, yeah. uh, 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 you know, Superman but for all intents and purposes, but it's not. Yeah. So the opposite of everything bizarro and the puppet master there turns out to be Lex Luthor that also sets up Brainiac for the next movie. Right, right. So that's the route we were going. I mean, you gotta have Brainiac at some point, for God's sakes. I mean, you gotta have Brainiac. I haven't I had Brainiac. I don't think on a, on a uh, theatrical uh, version of Superman. I don't think we've seen Brainiac. They, 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 they. I don't know what they were trying to do with that freaking Superman three, but that was oh, the inspiration. Yeah. Was Brainiac? I don't know why they didn't call it Brainiac. Yeah. Probably because it was, you know, I think probably they thought it was too. They, they, comic book movies were really different back then. Oh yeah, man. Superman three. I mean, I was like, put Richard Pryor in it. <laughs> yeah right what uh, don't was, get me wrong he's the was, best part of the movie that was but, cocaine yeah. richard too so it's, it's not the best one to put in there yeah um i was bringing in some live people here to ask some more Let's questions here as we like wrap it. up the last 24 minutes if you have a stream lab or a super chat you want to send through now's the time we got 24 minutes left so we're going to burn through these people who are waiting for us to and remember people, just one question please you have four people waiting behind you uh smithy alan smithy director alan smithy is here oh, oh I, I, I know oh, alan smithy here? my good uh, roca <laughs> yes you are you all are right good. How's it going, Riley? Hey, what's up, man? How I'm are you? you? I'm glad you know me. We haven't met in life yet, but I make some comments every now and then. So, hey. I know. I recognize you very well. How are you? All right. I'm excellent tonight. Good. Now, now that you're on, we've been waiting for you. So. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> and I promise not to talk schmo down, Roca. I don't want to cause a scene like last time. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, last time was him and Bibby. He tried to spark a fight between me and Bibbs. I respect I love that. it. I love but it. it. It was accidental completely, right? Really. <laughs> hey, I got, I got, if you guys have an IMDb ready to go, I got this movie and it's okay. called The Burrowers. The Burrowers. B U R R, Burrow. And it's pretty much the movie you guys were describing. It's a Western oh. with that stars a few oh. unknowns, but Clancy Brown is one of the characters. Clancy Brown, great, the and great Clancy Brown. It's basically like the searchers, but eventually there's some underground monsters involved. It's pretty good. Oh, hence the burrowers. Okay, oh, yeah. they burrow. Okay, and I it's didn't not know what's Tremors, out there because Tremors is is more of the comedic. This is actually a pretty straight horror movie. So it's, is it's it really? Kind of silly. Okay, I found it a, a little horrifying. So anyway, I like that. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna check that out. But just, don't that. worry. Don't let it stop you from making whatever. Make the same. Like you know, do your thing. You, you always got to be aware. The idea, so. 
But right, you got to be aware of what came out there, what worked, what didn't oh, yeah. work. If the burrowers didn't work, then right. you know, I don't know if we want to try the burrowers again. You know, it worked for me because I've seen it two or three times. I, I love it. Oh, I, yeah. That's great. Is it watchable or is it terrible? I liked it. It's a horror, oh. and it's kind of dark. It's um, there's no redeeming characters in it. They're all kind of like, eh, but you know, that's then I want the too. movie in my yeah. life. If there's no redeeming characters, then I need uh, I need more <laughs> of them in my life. Yeah, we need well, that right now in our world. JT Petty directed it, and he has written Batman: Vengeance, the video game. Okay. Uh, Prince of Persia, the warrior within Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. He wrote the Batman Begins video game. Nice. Um, the Is it after after that movie? Wow. Or before? Yeah. Oh, and the Burrowers. He wrote the Burrowers. What? What was he an actor? Uh, no, no, I was saying, is this after? Did he write all those things after? The oh Burrowers? no, no, no. Uh, Burrowers were 2008. So yeah, all that stuff was before, and then after all 2008, right. he's written a few, like Walking Dead season two video game. He wrote. Okay, uh, still I'm looking up the burrowers guy. right now. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta see this. I might want to watch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 oh, look at that poster. All right, remember, now we're I'm talking. Alan Smithy, 2008. Broca, so sometimes yeah. I love terrible films. I, I appreciate you promoting films you didn't direct. So it's it's a lot of love to you, man. Oh, yeah. there you go. Well, I, I ghostwrited the screenplay. <laughs> okay, well that works. Okay. You can no, still put your name on it, right? Yeah, this looks yeah. pretty good. Yeah, I'm, hey, I'm digging. Whatever the hell is that thing? I don't want yeah. in my life. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I was going right. to say, Riley, what's yeah. the difference between the word and and ampersand when you're talking about the uh, screenwriting? Good so an ampersand denotes a um, uh, a writing team. Right. So uh, they wrote it together. It's it's their property. It's their script. And if mm -hmm. you have an and a and d, it usually means. That dreaded this motherfucker got fired, and the other guy came in and rewrote it. But so, the guy got paid so was, something, right? They all got paid. They yeah. they all get paid. It's it's Writers Guild, and it's and it's not always that case either. It's not that you're fired. It's like thank you very much. We are right. now going to bring in this writer to rewrite and add some flavor that we like from this person. You know, Carrie Fisher. I keep bringing right. her up. I mean, she was well known to come in and punch up com uh, comedy writing. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. when they tell I you like, I know this script is based on your life story, but it sucks. So we're right. gonna follow it and we'll, we'll add some flavor. Thank you. Yeah, very much. You know, she's she's one of the best. Exactly. You get right. like it's a travesty. Carrie Fisher is not uh, with us anymore yeah. because one, she would have lit every motherfucker on fire who came after her for Last Jedi. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they would have just, I mean, there, I don't even think there would have been a backlash. I would have gone, yeah. that movie sucks. Shh, don't tell him. Carrie Fisher. Is oh, still Carrie's alive. walking by. He's yeah, like, Carrie would have, yeah, but um, yeah, she's one of the great writers. The ever. Carrie, Mary Pat Poppins, fucking Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Patton Oswald made a career doing that as well before he became famous. Uh, sure. Ghost writing for quite some time. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. You can make money I mean, in this town. Look and at I one of the say, earliest credits. Joss Whedon has a credit on Toy Story. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, gotcha. You know, I keep waiting JJ Abrams, known as Jeffrey Abrams, regarding wrote Henry. Regarding Henry, my yeah. friend. Thank you. Regarding very much. Henry. Yeah. Yeah. He also wrote that wonderful uh, Taking Care of Business with Jim Belushi. <laughs> oh, Lord. Did he really? I think his script originally was called Rolodex. Because the guy finds someone's Rolodex, right? Uh, and that's the yeah. plot. But they sense. changed that it to sense. taking care of business. So, right on. Hey, nice. you got to start somewhere. Anyway. You do. I would have taken right, that. Well, good to see you. Good to meet Thanks, you. Thanks, Smithy. Person, good to meet Riley, you in person. See you later. Roka, have fun. Right on. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. All right, let's go to Adrian there in the UK, waiting to talk to us at four in the almost four in the morning. What's four up, Adrian? How are you? Morning. What's up, dude? It's actually 15 minutes to five. Oh, oh my God! God. <laughs> Making it to dawn. I said to myself, I wasn't going to watch John Walker because he was going to start at three o'clock in the morning. But when I saw Mark Riley, I thought, I've got to go. <laughs> I love it, man. That's right. Thanks, dude. Yeah, I did have two questions, but John said one because of lack of time. All right. So I'm just going to go out with it. Okay. Mark, John, your favorite, your favorite horror film. Favorite horror film. Man, it goes back and forth, doesn't it, sometimes? I'm always on record. Halloween 1978. Yeah. There's yeah. something about it that I love. You call it the horror, the the simplicity of the idea, the execution of it. Um, and it, it's set during Halloween, so there's that feeling already that you're like, oh, shit. 
And um, the shape, it's one of the great slashers that everybody's tried to emulate after. I mean, you watch that those the last stand with Laurie Strode and, and the shape when he comes out of the darkness. It's your I'm worst memory. Anymore. It's like it's what you tell you, you, you stories about. It's like escape mental patient on Halloween, and you got a and you got the babysitter going, What? That's that's it's the scariest thing in the world. Yeah. So I've I love never it. seen Dan Mark, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a tough, tough question. Um, I mean, The Shining leaps to mind, but I don't think that's my favorite necessarily. It's the one I respect the most. Yeah. Sh not Shining is not even in my, my top favorite. 10. Wow. What? Yeah. Ah! All right. Uh, I like The Shining. I love The Shining. It, it does not exist in my top 10 favorite horror movies. Interesting. I'll All right. give you mine before I uh, clock Yeah, off. sure. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. 2013, The Conjuring. Oh, the conjuring! Conjuring is a really. I walked out. It's one. It's one of my favorite moments on Twitter because I was so blown away. I went and saw that movie by myself because wow. I needed to see it because I had heard so many wonderful things. And I walked out and I tweeted, "Juan," and I said, "That movie is fucking as scary as The Exorcist." Wow, that wow. movie got me. That is a well done. And he liked that tweet, and I was like, <laughs> "All right," <laughs> like I was like, I was blown away, man. It's not the scares that get you. It, it, it plays on your imagination. It makes yeah. you think yeah. what's there. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That that scene where the door opens and she's like looking at nothing but darkness. She's like, yeah. it's standing right behind you. You're like, oh, God, it's so scary. It is so scary. It's great. I, I think my answer is Gone Girl. That's the my worst. That's the scariest horror film I've ever watched. Gone Girl. Yeah, it, Gone Girl. The idea that <laughs> someone would be willing to put themselves to that extent to fuck up your life and put you in a cage God, to hold God. It to them for the rest of your life. That's a horror film, Major. That is a horror film. Yes, yeah, you're, you're not wrong. That is when, uh, that's a real demon. Cut to Sean Patrick Harris's throat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's yeah, the right. scary thing about that film. Right, yeah. I, it's true. There's not much scary about rope. Yeah. Uh, um, all right, thanks, Adrian. It's good to see you, my man. Thanks for staying up for us. Thanks for coming, Adrian. I like it. Good to see you. Yeah, man. Thanks. Thanks. All right, we got uh, J Dog coming in from uh, New England, somewhere in New England. Uh, J Dog, what's up, dude? New Hampshire. It's New Hampshire. Hampshire. <laughs> it's in New England. It's it's, it's in New England. I get it. No, no, I get it. It's New Hampshire, Oak. Embrace uh, the New Hampshire, the 603. I all, right. all right. It's repping 603. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, man. So uh, happy birthday to Sean Connery. It's his 90th. That's oh, right. The great the Sean Mad Connery. That's right. The Mad Titan, uh, Jay Washington, it's and just, my yeah. nephew, Cameron, who's 15. Kids oh. that were born in 2005 are now 15. Wow. Think about Jeez. that for a second, folks. Wow. 2005. I, I can't oh. believe it. Wow. No, so, I know. Uh, what, I can't either. What I wanted to ask you, Riley, is what do you think in your mind is going to be, going to be the next name of the Indiana Jones film? If Ooh. you had to guess, Ooh. something out of left field if you want. Good question. I have an idea, but go go, go, go with yours first. Yeah, I was going to go somewhere, but I think they already made a video game of that. Okay. okay. So um, how about... Uh, Indiana Jones and the Legend of the Fuck. I lost it. I don't know. Let's see. I'm trying to go with like Indiana Jones and like I want to. I bet there's that that video game. Should we go? Yeah. Should we put him to Atlantis? Is he going to Atlantis? Oh, okay. the Lost City of Atlantis. I mean, I don't know. I think okay. that's too. We got Mangold coming in, right? Right. He's directing yeah. it now. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Take a stab at it. This is a good writer exercise for me. I don't know. Okay. We don't even know where he's good. going. I think it would be something like Indiana Jones and the Sea of Consequence or Sea of Consequences. I think something, oh. something water, something that, you know what I mean? Like another sea world of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Like that. A it's deep sea, you know? Yeah. Like a water world type kind of thing. Okay. Just not as cringeworthy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. The Kingdom and the yep. Crystal Skull was, was, you know, it was a decent title back in the day before you yeah. knew what it was, but before it nuked yeah. the fridge. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I yeah, I'd want to like I'd want to do some research on this. Grab like a legend, like find out what is the what is the um, you know, what is he going after? The Ark, uh, the Holy Grail, like what is right, it? You know? Something. Oh yeah. right, yeah, that's yeah, the way the, you go in there, right? Yeah, so then we could find that legend. You know, I don't know what it yeah. looks like yet. I like the sea though, Indiana Jones in the sea of okay, you know, see, something. See if, put him on space, sea of tranquility. No, I'm joking. The sea of uh, tranquility, yeah, uh, yeah. 
What is he going after? That's a good question. You've had the argument. He's always going after something. Something really. Yeah, you got it's a MacGuffin, right? Yeah. right? It's kind of secondary. Yep. I mean, yeah, it drives right. the plot, but you know, Indy's going to figure something else out on the side. That's why I didn't like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. It's like yeah. you're looking for a what the hell is that thing? You're carrying it around like I don't know. You know, what, you know what? You know what was missing in that movie? It should have belonged in a museum, and he should have said, "This belongs in a museum." That's uh-huh. that's what was missing. He should have put it in a museum. That's what the problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. What if he's looking for the original cross that Jesus was crucified on? That would be something. Okay. Okay. Something. Is that is that actually a thing? I don't know. I'm saying you could create something like that. Yeah. Right. Right. You could play with that. All right. I love it. God, all right, now Jay, I'm going to be thinking about freaking Indiana Jones titles all night. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I've created a monster. No. I love it. Uh, Thanks, and brother. Rogue, if, you, if, you, yeah. if I got to lose weight, you got to lose weight because I got a wedding to go to in November. And uh, I'm you know, I'm going to be training like a, a madman uh, yeah, starting it. Labor Day weekend. Yeah. And uh, good luck with your uh, Thank you. uh, weight loss journey. And uh, the name I think you guys should have, take it from the future owner of the St. Louis Stallions of the NFL. The oh. Steel Stallions is where it's at. All right. The Steel Stallions could be fun. I love it. I'm, That's not, good. I'm in. All right. Cool. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate it, man. It was good to Thanks, see you. Guys. Good to see yeah. you, man. Take it easy. Oh, dude, we got a special treat coming up now, man. A special Uh-oh. treat. This one rarely gets out of bed and stays up this late, but I can't believe she has put down her baby uh, and walked away from her husband to hang out with us tonight. Kristen Smith. Oh, Hello. there she is. Hi, Kristen. Uh oh. Unmute yourself, Kristen. There she goes. Wait. There there we go. Okay. There there you go. Go. Number, number one, I'm literally always working. So I work until like 3 a.m. like every day because oh, yeah, I yeah, have to same. watch a child during the day. So I'm always awake. Yikes. Always awake. Uh, number two, she's not a baby. She's two years old. I know. I was going to say. That's a baby. Like, anyway. I don't. I, what happened? What even happened? No, what is that? Can it write? Can it write? It. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> then it's baby. I'll, I'll, it's send, a I'll send a I'll send a sample of her writing to Riley, and he can judge it for us. I, I yeah. <laughs> can the uh, can the uh, spawn uh, rights yet? Has the, has the spawn of uh, your uh, your your innards uh, learned to friggin' talk yet? <laughs> he, uh, he does not shut the fuck up, so it's yeah, accurate. It's a- Oh, Parenting yeah. is great until you're a parent, and then you don't want. Yeah, it's it's it. great. It's the best. Uh, okay, <laughs> so number one, Roka, I said I yep. would try and roast you, so I'm just gonna okay. get this out of the way. Go ahead, Riley. How are you? It's so oh, good. Oh, it's so good to you. see you. Oh my God, Chris, Man, good to see I, you. I missed you so much. I know. Like, miss I'm you. so glad that I came on your show to talk Thank to you. Thank right you. Now. Yeah, I appreciate like, that. I just this is. Like the best part of my day is getting to see Mark Riley. Just the best. Suck it, Roka. So happy. <laughs> I want her to take her skin off and it's Ferris Mathuna under her skin. Oh, yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure. Right? That's hysterical. No, y'all, y'all know I just show up randomly in streams True. to watch. Like, it's just like the most random. Like, I was on Riley's Twitch watching him play something like a couple weeks ago and it, I was nice. like, I probably won't watch again for like another two weeks because i just don't have that kind of time but I oh like yeah you guys. I, get it. I like seeing what you're doing everyone's doing a great job and oh, uh, thank you. i wish i had more time in the day so i could support everyone as much as they all deserve oh i get it thank yeah. you and you're one it of the og fans right? you're one of the yeah. og fans so like i mean <laughs> for, at least for us in top 10 you are one of our ogs so it's like yeah uh, anytime you come into anything i'm always happy to see you or see your uh, see any kind of comment you have to make it's always a joy yeah oh, no yeah. i mean i i love i love everything everyone's doing and and the amount of growth everyone has had mm. that they have been forced to have has just been incredible and yeah. what you're doing too christian with with yeah. the coven and with the i love seeing you girls together that's so great. I, yeah, we're you know what Christina uh, is in the Air Force and she just started basic today. So I oh, saw that. I'm oh. not going to be doing as oh. much, but I am going to be joining um, the PJ Campbell Network for scary nice. movies. I'm doing that too with PJ. Speaking of Halloween, I, I think we're I think we're watching Halloween. At one yeah, point. it's like it's in like it's like next weekend. I think. Wow. Is it really? It's, it's like the first weekend of September or something. <laughs> I'll I'll let you know. 
Yeah, please do. I better. Yeah. So, no. Oh, there yeah, it is. I mean, yeah, I'm, I have it in my calendar. I'm, <laughs> trying, I'm trying really hard to not let, you know, uh, my child dictate my entire existence, but it's true, difficult. True. I hear uh, that. But yeah, thing. I mean, yeah. Yeah. COVID really like messed a lot of stuff up for everybody. But oh, I, yeah. I love that. I love that you guys are doing a great job and finding ways Thank to you. make it work. So that's awesome. Thank you. I do have Thank a question. You. I'll be okay. Brief. Uh, I could sit here and talk to you guys for like the rest I love of my it, life, but I'll be yeah. brief. Okay. Uh, okay. So I've been seeing a lot of people talking about the nice guys because it's on HBO max mm. and it's one of my favorite recent movies to come out. Yes. It's yes. so good. It's so underrated. I love that people are talking about it and getting the chance to watch it. Yeah, it is yeah. a movie at the top of my list for movies that deserve a sequel. Okay. Yeah. What, what would your choice be? Like recent movies that absolutely 100% deserve a sequel. <laughs> that isn't the Man, a man of Steel. That isn't the Man of Steel. <laughs> that isn't, <laughs> make, sure, Riley. If you want to say a Man of Steel, if that makes no, sense. No, no, you know. We, but, can't do it. I, I, I think, and it's funny, we made a joke um, with Edge of Tomorrow. It wasn't a b big fucking deal, but oh, that deserves a sequel. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's, good, it's a good movie. Uh, yeah. I like that movie a lot. I think it yeah. deserves a sequel. Um, I'm trying to remember something else. Yeah, Man of Steel 2, of course. Uh, what do you got, Roka? I'm trying to think. I, I, what happened after Bridesmaids? What happened to the ladies after Bridesmaids, right? Does she get married to, uh, what's his face? Chris, whatever his name is, the, the Irish cop there. Yeah. Do they get, what's their wedding situation? What's their uh, bridal shower like? What's their journey with uh, Maya Rudolph being in the other boat? That could be funny. I'd love to see a sequel to them. Doing that, uh, you know, bring back Rose Byrne, Melissa McCarthy, all of them, uh, and see what the situation is like in reverse and all the nice. nuttiness that Kristen Wiig goes through in her mind as she gets ready. Because now she's in abundance. Her, her, like her shop is great. Uh, she's in love. So what are the comedic things that you're going to discover about her that feel um, real? Which is what yeah. Bridesmaids, yeah, it's a comedy, but it, it's, it's really almost about like, real um, relationships. It's like the hangover, like the yeah, hangover yeah, trilogy. Yeah. They could they I'm could surprised. do yeah. <laughs> that would be perfect, actually. I'd I'd be into that. Yeah, I'd be into I'd that. Good like choice. That. Yeah, uh, I love uh uh in in chat um sideways. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. She just got productions again, dude. Yeah, sideways. I don't know, man. I love is that there first a movie. To that? Yeah. There's a sequel in the book. There's three oh, books, there I believe. Okay. Yeah, um, in the in the book sequel, I didn't read it yet, but I wanted to. It's on my list okay. of things. It's like I think, like Jack gets divorced. Obviously, um, Thomas Hayden Church's character gets divorced, and Miles has to put his mother in a home, and it's up in Oregon. <laughs> so they decide to go uh, wine tasting in the Oregon um, wine area, and the and and you know trouble ensues and that kind of stuff. It could work. I mean, yeah. as long as you bring everybody back, I would think. But um, right. you know. Right. That's yeah, I agree. Happen. The other the other one that I would love would be like Man from Uncle, I think didn't get a lot oh, of attention. Yeah. And that from was Uncle's so much great. fun. That was yeah. so much fun. And like movie. Yeah. yeah. I would love yeah. that. I, it would be great. Love I don't it. know. I don't know if Bibiani knows this, but Elizabeth Debicki was in that movie. I don't know if you know. <laughs> oh boy. Jesus. You know, he's not here to hear your smack talk. <laughs> yeah, I got I nothing did it to all say last right now. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, anything else, Kristen? No, I just so good to see you, Kristen. I miss seeing you guys. I miss seeing you. It's good to see you. What's your tat? What's your tat again on your shoulder? What is it? What's the tat again? On uh, your shoulder? It, it's a lion, like a geometric <laughs> lion. Good God, it's incredible. Oh, I respect yeah. that's rad. Respect it. Love that. <laughs> it's uh, been a long time since I've got a new one, so who knows? Maybe I'll yeah. get one soon. <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. Tattoo or baby? Which one comes next for you? Another baby or oh, a tattoo? John is getting fixed. I am not getting what? pregnant again. Go well, there I we are. Feel, that answers that. I tattoo it is. Pregnant is the literal worst thing of all time. All right. Fair. Like the end result is great. Yeah. The process I, I, that's is. That's what I, I hear. Could, I could skip it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could all skip right, it. Fair. My entire life was like. <clears throat> <laughs> all right there you go Kristen. I love it. All right. Thanks, guys. Live the baby Thanks, making Kristen. thank you Kristen. appreciate it good love to you. see you i love her man she's the she's best she's the best she's the best uh, we got two more stream uh, super chats and we'll let you out of here riley uh, let's all get right, to man. the man bang reviews what are your thoughts on the invasions of the body snatchers from 1978 the donald sutherland one. donald sutherland it's a great movie i love it yeah oh 
I love it. There's a great sci-fi. There's a great sci-fi special. Talk about remembering stuff in your childhood that yeah, yeah. that Robin Williams hosted. What with E.T. Wow. He hosted okay. it with E.T. and it was all the sci-fi movies and it was right around E.T. when it came out. So I lost my mind. But they 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 touched on Invasion of the Body Snatchers and I remember Ooh. seeing scenes of that. And Donald Sutherland, and, and it's one of those like you know the clip shows where it's like yeah. all about going deep in. And I'm that I'm little, but I'm like taking notes. I'm gonna watch that one. I'm gonna watch that one. I'm gonna watch that one. <laughs> that one scared the shit out of me. I'm gonna watch that. Um, so yeah, I, I remember it. it's a great movie. Yeah, yeah, I remember that too. It's intense, intense. It is hell. intense. It's a good, it's a good remake. Yeah, it is. And, it's a great and, remake. And shout out to Paul Oyama, who knew who the reverend was or the priest was in that movie to to beat uh, Snyder. Uh, when he was defending his belt there in New York, incredible stuff. Um, oh yeah, right. Andrew Hale says Green Room is in my top five horror thrillers. Patrick Stewart is terrifying in that role. I have, have yet to see this. I need to watch this, don't I? Oh wow! Oh wow! Okay. Oh, this is a great horror movie. Okay. Oh, you okay. you especially would really like this movie, Roca, because I think okay. it um it plays to the the simplest of like wanting to punch Nazis. You know, it's like there's a. <laughs> <laughs> simplest thing of punching not well and it's like it's a really fucked up movie in that you know right. okay uh, white supremacist kind of thing uh you know ooh, okay really brutal really really oh god all right uh, jeremy yeah, salnier i believe is the director okay uh very very good movie yeah okay. oh yeah i gotta watch that thing then i gotta watch that one and don't breathe those are the two that i need to. oh watch. god don't breathe yeah i haven't seen don't joe breathe either so i gotta jump on top of that yeah man. um Let's see. Uh, 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 so Kid Jams 87 says, Just Friends needs a sequel. Just Married. Oh, Just Friends? Yeah. Uh, the one with uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds and Amy Smart. I love that movie. That's a great yeah, Christmas movie. movie's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know, I will say this. Uh, uh, that's one of the my stories with, with Harloff. Uh, we went and saw oh. that movie and both hated it. We were like, oh. oh. Wow. And, you know, it just wasn't funny for us at the time. And yeah. um, I recently, it was like, Maybe not last Christmas, but the Christmas before Julie and I watched it just for the hell of it. And I was like, it wasn't as bad as I remembered it. So that's for sure. <laughs> I love that movie. It's one of my yeah. one of my guilty pleasures every Christmas. It's it's funny. I, I remember really fondly li liking it a lot more than I than the first time. So there yeah, it is. Yeah. Anna Ferris is hilarious <laughs> in that movie. Uh, she is. She is. Let's see. Raven, real quick, says the reason I'm confident in y'all and why I believe it won't hurt as much for me if you have to drop shows is because it was your decision, not someone else's. I'm invested in the people. Can't wait to see what's in store. Love to both of you. Thank, Thank you, Raven. you for that. Very yeah. Kind of you. Uh, Jamal no Castro says, Hi, Roca. Hi, Riley. If Movie Talk ever came back, would you guys want to return to the show? Uh, no. No. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Riley. Not, you know, I've done, I've done, I'm, I'm kind of moving on. That's what yeah. I talked about earlier, dude. Yep. Like yep. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to write more and create and there's yeah. going to be shows for sure. But it's like, yeah, you know, I love what you're doing, Roca. There's something I want to do. That's a little bit different. You know, yeah. that's like something over here. That's we're all carving it. We're finding our way. The yeah. pandemic has forced us all to look really deep and, and uh, do a lot of soul searching, maybe a lot of creativity stuff, yep. you know? Absolutely. So yeah, I agree with uh, everything Riley just said. Mm -hmm. Cheska Productions, last one. My pitch, Indiana Jones, Legend of the Deep. Indy searching for a relic that sank during a transport to the new world. In other news, if The Shining doesn't make it, then what the fuck is in Riley's top 10 horror films? Well, Ooh, I love Tushka, that. for a dollar, I don't think you get Riley's top 10 horror films. So I, I'm after, maybe you can give him one or two, Riles, for a dollar. Well, the, the, top, the, the top three would probably be halloween exorcist texas chainsaw massacre okay there you go the original go. answered yeah. greatly all right it's 901 my man i dude i know you had a long ass day so i can't thank you enough thank for you, taking my friend. two hours to hang out with me I brother appreciate man. it and hang out with the fans and the outlaw nation here uh we, we we love you brother we love you madly i appreciate it thanks guys i love seeing all of you love hanging out with you roca um you know Peace. we had a rough weekend but you know here we are man yeah, we're, we're still we're still doing what we do and what we love. So thank you, everybody, and um and I'd love it if you come watch uh, me and Jason it's, Inman it's over on stuff. Thursday. It's yeah, yeah, come it's come on over, come on, come on over. Uh, check out my YouTube channel. I'll be tweeting it out. But but uh, really, check out that Patreon page, patreoncom slash Table. A lot of stuff uh planned over there. Really is the kind of the incubation for a lot of the stuff that I'm working on, and I'm really changing some tiers around and trying to get more involved with uh get more people involved in that kind of thing. But um, YouTube channel is youtube.com slash Mark Riley Roundtable. And yeah, I'm doing Riley's Cantina there in a bigger boat. 
and then go check check out Twitch. It was just up there on the on the yeah, chat. Yeah. Mark Riley. It's uh, twitch.tv slash Mark Riley. I do a lot of uh, Camp Blood. I moved over there because you're talking about oh, yeah. you know numbers. Nobody was watching the horror stuff, which right. is unfortunate. Uh, was un unfortunate. So now we get to talk horror all the time, and then you know I play the horror games, and you just scare the shit out of me. So it's great. <laughs> I love it. That's fantastic. That is awesome. Yeah, if, guys, follow Riley at everything he does. Sure, uh, it's it's great stuff. It's brilliant stuff. He's an intelligent man. And Thanks, you gotta, man. You gotta, you gotta get a fun stuff. And uh, uh, please hit the like button on this thing as we're saying goodbye. And I'll uh, let Riley go and do my own goodbyes to y'all. Thank you, Riles. Peace Have a good out, everybody. Tonight. Much See you later, you, dude. Take Much care. love to you. Bye. All right. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You got yourselves a nice uh, two hours with my man, Mark, Mark Riley, who was uh, at the tail end of his day, very exhausted. I'll tell you what, I was kind of wacky and exhausted when I first started doing the show. And uh, being with my friend just kind of you know centered me and leveled me out. So I hope you all had a great time uh, spending two hours with Mark Riley. Thank you all so much for watching or listening to the Outlaw Nation show. It is available on the Outlaw Nation Podcast Network. All the shows we do here on the Outlaw Nation, they're available on the Outlaw Nation Podcast Network in audio form. Uh, that DC Fandom one is over there on the Geek Buddies Network. For those of you who uh, loved that on Sunday night, uh, me and uh, uh, the Geek Buddies getting together, uh, Shannon uh, McClung, Michael Vogel with Mike Kalinowski, if you haven't listened to that one, two and a half hours of us breaking down DC fandom. We did the show live, so people chimed in with their questions, their streamlabs, their super chats. It was an incredible show. Uh, so if you haven't watched it yet or listened to it yet, you can go do that on the Geek Buddies uh, stream, uh, Geek Buddies podcast stream. You can go listen to it, or you can watch it here on the uh, Outlaw Nation channel over there on the under the Geek Buddies uh, banner. Uh, tomorrow we've got uh, what? Tomorrow I'm recording Jedi Way, so look for that. Uh, I'm going to drop it overnight, Wednesday into Thursday. Also tomorrow, the Geek Buddies. We're going to record our own uh, regular show uh, tomorrow and drop it as quickly as possible for you all to enjoy. As I said, don't forget about the deep cut interview with Melora Walters. Would love for you all to get some views on that. A really fun conversation with her about her career, about uh, her time with uh, with uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, but also uh, talking about depression uh, in the last uh, about 15 minutes of the show or in the middle 20 minutes of the show we talk about her uh the influence uh, she has found in her work exploring why people are consumed by depression what happens to them how they find their way out all of that as she's writing and directing now films she's exploring that as a theme so we get into that a little bit so not just the movie talk but also some real uh deep talk as well also i've got an interview coming soon this week i think later on oh no coming on monday i interviewed the director and uh, one of the actors involved in this documentary uh, about robin williams it's called robin's wish uh and it's a, a documentary about uh, uh, what uh, happened to Robin Williams, why he committed suicide, and his wife uh, or his widow uh, is the driving force behind this documentary, explaining Louis body dementia, which is what Robin Williams had, and explaining what happened to him and why people who cop out to just say, oh, he died of suicide from depression, need to take a second look at this and understand what it was actually driven by and why he committed this, uh, why he committed suicide. Uh, it's a fantastic, informative uh, documentary that will have you uh, kind of reconsidering the whole uh, position you might have had about uh, Robin Williams's passing. Uh, so a really nice 20 minute conversation with them about uh, the documentary, Rick Overton, who is the actor I mentioned, he was in this and he is interviewed in the film as well because he did a lot of improv with Robin uh, towards the tail end of his life. So a lot of great conversations, stuff coming up from there as well. So look for all of that uh, uh, going on on the Outlaw Nation channel. Um, and uh, I think that's it. And you guys, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, much love to all of you. And uh, we'll talk to you. Uh, thoughts on Project Stardust? Uh, I don't know anything about that, my man. Uh, let me hold on. I know I'm saying goodbye, but let me just because you donated some. Let me take a look at this. Project Stardust. Oh, yeah, the Death Star Project. Oh, yeah. You know what? The next time Riley comes on, we'll talk about it uh, and take a look at it. Or maybe I'll address it with Laura Kelly tomorrow when we record our Star Wars show and ask her her thoughts about it. How about that? How about I give it to you like that? Uh, all right. 
cool, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Soak it jams 80, suck it jams 87. I totally, totally appreciate it. All right. Uh, love you guys. I'm going to roll on out of here uh, and get some rest. Uh, and uh, we'll, oh, and don't forget the top 10 show just dropped a new episode today. It's Tuesday. We dropped a new episode this morning. So go and find us there on the top 10 uh, uh, podcast feed and the top 10 YouTube network. That's right. We have a top 10 YouTube channel. So you can go watch us uh, uh, count down our top 10 films uh, there. So go and uh, give it some love there. All right. I'm out of here. Uh, much love to all of you. We'll talk to you next time on another brand new episode of the Outlaw Nation show. And remember what I say at every show. Please remember this. Please, whatever you need to do to get through the next second, next minute, next hour, next day, next week, next month, next year. I want you to find your way to do that. I know times are tough right now. I know it's crazy. I know there are moments where maybe you consider taking that option to take your own life or to uh, just kind of give up on it all. And I can't encourage you enough to please hang in there and find your way to either meditate or listen to music or take a walk or work out or just revisit a movie or a TV show that might bring you some joy just for a little bit, just enough for you to hang on because you never know what's waiting for you on the other side. If no other thing is an example, let me be an example. Almost took my life in 2016 and look how many amazing things have happened for me since then. So there is hope. There is possibility. You just have to fight through the dark times and you can find the light you can find the light if you fight so much love to all of you thanks again and we'll see you soon here on the outlaw nation show take care mm -hmm.